This is the Buzz Adams Morning Show Podcast. Barstool Talk Daily. Except it's really early in the morning and no booze. For the most part. Adams Morning Show, Monday through Friday, 5 to 10. KLEQ and KLEQ HD1, El Paso, a town square media station. You seem very excited. You seem excited. Oh, what's to get excited about? What's to get excited about? Well, let's see. It's Thursday, right? It's just Thursday. Just a regular Thursday. Well, I, for one, am very excited about about this show. Yep. Nothing to get excited about. That's negative thinking. I don't have time for that. I'm just going to start talking, and there we go. It's showtime. I am not a morning person. I need my coffee. Who's ready for some Java? Good morning, world. It's a brand new day. I'm ready. TGI Thursday. Good morning. Sleep well. Good morning, sleeping beauty. Morning. I'm still sleeping. You know, it's such a beautiful morning. It's Thursday. It's Thursday, and I want some coffee. <laughs> <laughs> I want coffee. What do you want for breakfast? Just coffee. Just coffee. I'll just have coffee, thanks. Caffeine is not a food group. Says you. Says you. You know what else I just realized? What? what? It's no time. Broadcasting throughout West Texas. <laughs> The Buzz Adams Morning Show. Thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you so much. Good morning and welcome everybody uh, to our Thursday morning show. It is June 20th, first day of June, longest day of the year. Uh, this day of is summer? What I say? June. First day of summer, sorry. Today's the first day of summer. Barely the first day? Yeah, you think it's going to get hot? Like hotter already? Well, all right. Today's the first day of summer. And uh, I guess we should let you know heading in, it was really windy in some parts of town. Trees were blown over. Not, not branches. There's certainly a lot of branches were, were knocked down. But trees were blown uh, were blown over. And we didn't have electricity in my side of town. And I don't know if there were any other electric outages in any other parts of town but it was um i did see that the west side had some outages well we were we were in that pattern so uh just be aware let's get a look at el paso weather but uh i'm here to tell you there might be like trees down blocking i mean it's possible that there could be a tree down blocking where you need to go so maybe take some extra time uh getting to work today for sure. And our weather is brought to you by Wet n' Wild. Get the season passes now and enjoy every day at Wet n' Wild, including special occasions. This is the way the forecast uh, shapes up for the rest of the week. It's going to be very windy again today. We're going to have 15 to 20, maybe uh, in excess of 20, 20 to 30 mile an hour winds later in the afternoon. Uh, very cloudy. And uh, winds in the forecast. Also, is there a chance of rain? There is. A 15% chance of rain for the El Paso coverage area today. Our high temperature is going to be 87. So at least, I guess, it'll cool things off a little bit. It'd really be nice if we got a little bit of that rain, though, finally. Oh, yeah. Uh, Tomorrow, look for something very similar. Not as windy, but it's going to be cloudy. We're going to have a chance of rain throughout the day. And we're going to put that at around a 20% chance of rain for Friday. Clears up for the weekend, it looks like. Not seeing much, maybe a spot or two of rain here and there, but really does not amount to much for the weekend. Saturday, mostly sunny. 98 is going to be the high temperature on Saturday. It's going to be mostly sunny on Sunday as well. 101, the high temperature for Sunday. So we'll have a couple of days today and tomorrow and Saturday where it won't reach triple digits. Next week, though, first full week of summer, looking at 106s, 105s, a lot of those in the forecast oh, for next week, Joanna. Yeah, no, I know. <laughs> at least there's not a wildfire. I mean, that is a, a good My point. condolences to the folks who, who if you're listening uh, up near Redoso, we know you guys had a uh, wildfire. Uh, but we don't have a hurricane, which it looks like they might be getting ready for on the other side of the state. 
Weather update today brought to you by Wet n Wild. Get your season pass. It's good for any day and every day, including special events like the Neon Paint Party. That's coming up June 29th. And the July 4th Fireworks Spectacular. Save on tickets and buy in advance now at wetwild.com. That's wetwild.com. So uh, we're going to have a true crime report. That's on the way in about an hour in the 7 o'clock hour. Joanna's going to have our Hollywood cheese may. Uh Our look at uh, Hollywood and entertainment news. Joanna, what do we have headed our way in that department? Oh, big uh, news for fans of this. A Spaceballs sequel is (laughs) in development. I guess if you're going to do it. You know, Mel Mel Brooks is like, a, he's either 100 or very close to 100 now. He kind of is, I think. He is set to produce, and Josh Gad is set to star. Uh-huh. That's Olaf. <laughs> no, no, I know, I know Josh Gad. <laughs> I'm just wondering, so Spaceballs was uh, a, a, a parody of Star Wars. Right. And I'm just wondering, what will they parody, like all the stuff that's happened in Star Wars, or will it kind of go off on its own and be its own? Will it parody itself? Right. Mel Brooks is 97. Yeah, I knew he was getting way up there. Uh, All right, we'll (laughs) find out about that in uh, the Hollywood Cheese May coming up later. If you love watching people that you've not yet heard of swim, boy, are you in luck because they got more swimming on NBC today. The Olympic trials continue. <laughs> really? <laughs> yes. And, uh, you know, I I definitely check out the Olympics when they're on. So I thought, well, maybe I ought to watch these Olympic trials to see what swimmers are going to get in there. And I tried my best uh-huh. to be really, really interested in uh, the swimming. Oh, then that's what I... So this morning I was watching the news and they were saying, like, one of the athletes uh, dislocated his shoulder... Because he was, like, slamming on the water in oh, celebration. Oh, oh, yeah? And so he just, oh, like... Oh, no. And, but an then American? I, like, I think it was an American. And I thought, wait, the Olympics haven't started yet. But and if he dislocated his me, shoulder, like, celebrating, he was slamming the water celebrating? Yeah, like, he celebrated, and so he, like, slammed the water and dislocated his shoulder. What if that dislocated shoulder keeps him out of the freaking Olympics? Because they're supposed exactly. to start soon. And I thought, wait, the Olympics haven't started yet. Hey, uh, Nico. Yeah. How's it going, buddy? Oh, Good. What's up? Now, that shirt I like. I have like a long sleeve version of that shirt. Oh, that, God. That, Don't that, tell me I'm starting to dress like you. Yeah, you're oh, kind you of starting to dress like it. me. Right. Let's coordinate next week. That is a nice be shirt. Twinkies. <laughs> it could be twinsy. Oh, it was a French swimmer, Buzz. Oh, okay. Well, good. <laughs> I mean, I'm not glad. Does it say he's going to miss the Olympics? I don't know. As long as he's not American. Right. <laughs> uh, also on TV tonight. TV pr- tonight. The, okay. Since you uh, <laughs> asked for it, fine. TV tonight. TV tonight. TV tonight. You know, you have a sound machine. I could give that to you to play. You could hit it any time no, like, you want No, to. because you always po- have that potted down and you don't trust me to have the, the machine up. <laughs> I, I trust you. <laughs> I, I don't trust you fully. So, uh, so on, we've done this dance before. They got a new. They got a new series on Netflix. America's Sweethearts, Dallas Cowboys cheerleaders. Is it just me, or did they have a reality show about making the cheerleaders <gasps> yeah, back like in the nineties? Cheerleader, <laughs> right? On regular cable, I was hooked on that. <laughs> oh yeah, I don't know why, but was I was. Was it your childhood dream? Actually, I, they become a Dallas Cowboys. <laughs> I think cheerleader? on Pluto TV they have that show as its own station. The Dang. Dallas, uh, the Dallas Cowboys che- cheerleaders. cheerleaders. Che- yeah, I station. wonder why they had to make a, sh- a whole channel. <laughs> uh, well, you watch it on mute. <laughs> Nico, you think about what you want to preview for news, and I'm going to hit a couple of stories here. Louisiana has become the first state in the union to make it mandatory that all schools from kindergarten right on through universities display the Ten Commandments somewhere in the classroom. Oh, this made me so sad. And it's going to get challenged, right? Yeah, the ACLU is challenging. It it Mm -hmm. makes you sad? Yeah. Well, I mean... It makes me. This is a, a, a. This is something I thought was settled, in that we don't do this. This is not something we do. We don't put religious things. I get where you're coming from, but I, I would say there's not a whole lot objectionable 
in the Ten Commandments. That's not the point. Like, it doesn't say, like, kill all the gays or anything like that. That's not the point. The point isn't whether it's objectionable material or not. It's whether you're pref- you have a preference for one religion over another. How about we put the Quran up in every school? Oh, everyone would be up in arms on that one. Why not? I mean, it's the same, isn't it? I think what their argument is, and this is the argument they're making, is that a lot of U.S. law, the the founders of our country and the people who wrote the Constitution really look to the to Moses as the original lawgiver. What? And that it's supposed to have to do with our heritage and culture. So that whole separation of church and state means nothing? Well, they do have, like... Uh, uh, government is not supposed... You're just playing devil's advocate or dummy's advocate right now? Dummy's, a- dummy's, dummy's advocate? advocate? Yeah. <laughs> now, this would be a good one where I am the devil's advocate, I guess. Because it's about the, you know, something out of the Bible. I know you don't actually believe this. Uh, I, I'm, I don't know that it's going to really hurt anybody. I don't think that's the point. It's been settled. We don't do this. We don't put one religious text in a public especially when taxpayers what you think muslim taxpayers feel great about that you think you know muslims in louisiana what about kidding what about (laughs) jewish what about well they should be okay with it because it's from the old testament okay uh, you know what i mean it it could be anything (laughs) okay what about the zoroastrians or the uh uh, worshippers of the great spaghetti monster. Of the great spaghetti monster. That's my point, though, is it doesn't matter. There's all kinds of different religious texts, Buddhists, uh, Hindus. What if you're, I mean, if you are a, a taxpayer and you aren't that religion, why would you pay money to have that put in there? I don't think it's going to cost that much. They just have to get a framed or suitable for framing poster and place it in the room. It says that it must be in font that is clearly legible and real. You're just playing a devil's I know you, you, you can't believe this that this is this is going to be okay. I would say there are like lots worse parts of the Bible in there. Babes basically says don't kill. Here's an interesting thing. That's not the point. Who cares what the if I don't take, be, let, I don't let's say I don't believe in those things. You don't believe in not I'm killing. I'm saying let's just say I don't believe in any of the things that are on there. Yeah. Let's say if I'm a person who's like yeah, I don't believe in any of that. I'm a satanist. That uh, Joanna doesn't but it doesn't bother her. What? <laughs> if they have the stat, if they have the uh, Ten Commandments up. Yeah, they shouldn't the- put that. Oh, okay. All right. I'm on the side of, yeah, don't do that. What's kind of interesting is the Ten Commandments, if you take the Bible chronologically, like plenty of the heroes of the Old Testament break many of those commandments. Like, right. Thou shalt not kill. And then God commanded them to smite all the Hebridites or whatever. Well, that's not... The Old Testament God is not the real God. That's the Demiurge. So, okay. so you're an Essene all of a sudden. I'm you're, a, you're a Gnostic. I'm a Gnostic. I got it. Yeah. You're a Gnostic. All right. Uh, Elon Musk says that there have been two uh, uh, assassination attempts on him in the last year. But don't worry. It's not a, just a really rich guy getting paranoid. People actually don't like him. So <laughs> 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 we're going to hear from Elon Musk. Uh, concerning that, Wait, like, is does he, is is he joking about it or is he serious? Um, it's hard to tell. You know, he's hard to read. He's one of these uh, people on the spectrum that part of their spectrum hood is that he's it's difficult to get a read on what he <laughs> thinks like is you funny. Can't tell if he's being funny. Like when he showed up the first day at work and he brought a kitchen, a whole kitchen sink with him to Twitter. Do you remember? It's like. Is that his idea of a joke, or is that like super hilarious to people on I the autism he, spectrum? Like people have said that he thinks he's very funny. <clears throat> That's one of his defining characteristics. Yeah, he thinks he's very funny. Okay. Uh, well, I I guess he's being serious about this. <laughs> uh, all right, Nico. What else do we have coming up in the news today? Oh my gosh, there has been a second death in the those New Mexico wild, wildfires. Right. Uh, you hate to hear that. Yeah, the wildfires burning in New Mexico have now been confirmed to have taken at least two lives. Mm. One person was found in a burned vehicle in the South Fork Fire, which forced the evacuation of Rio Doso, while a second body was found on the side of the road near a motel with burn injuries from the fire. Oh, God. Over 20,000 acres have been burned so far. Governor Michelle Lujan Grisham said last night that the loss of around 1,400 structures and two lives make this one of the most devastating fires in New Mexico history. And, uh... She she's not not lying. Um, hey, join Nico tonight for some comedy in Rodoso. 
Is that is that still? Oh my god! Is that canceled? No, absolutely not. Uh, it's not canceled. I mean, it's, it's ab- absolutely it not. Ab- it absolutely, absolutely is not. canceled. Yeah, it's absolutely okay. canceled. Uh, <laughs> I'm saying you, if you, when you say you'll see him here, there, I'm saying absolutely not. Oh, okay. you won't see me there. I figured actually. Uh, this is a big deal. This is honestly yeah, all, course, all yeah. we uh, will probably be talking about for the rest of the morning. Uh, that's probably what all my news will be about. Um, there's going to be, I mean. There, there has to be some uh, help. I mean, fundraising and kind of they're going to sure. need a lot of oh, help. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. So a lot of help. Uh, two fatalities. We hope that's all there is to that. And as far tons as the of fatalities people, go. But your friend Tracy. Uh, but did you see her post? Tracy, uh, crazy Tracy. Y- yes. Okay. No. Uh, Wait. I saw her on set. No, 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 no. I mean, this is since yesterday. Or I mean, a lot Did of she go to a lot has happened. So? I guess she has property that were, oh. where uh, she said that any animals can, you know, shelter and play on her property or whatever. Uh, it seems like uh, Justin Underwood is putting a collection together. Uh, it is, yeah. At, okay. eight, eight, at eight o'clock this morning, I think at his office. I, I mean, just so many people. We should definitely mention all of those efforts that are going on. I mean, Cloudcroft is kind of like where. Where you go from El Paso to a Wait. state, uh, excuse me, Rudoso. Well, Cloudcroft Rudoso. Uh, but Rudoso is where a lot of people. I don't think the fire is at Cloudcroft. Oh, okay. All right. I misspoke. <laughs> but what I'm saying is, uh, you know, a lot of people from El Paso go skiing up in Rudoso or on property yes. in Rudoso. It really has a big uh, effect on us. All right. We've got the uh, Today in Sound Clips on the way coming up here in just a few minutes. We'll have that headed your way right after this. The Daily Calendar. Oh, hey, kids. It's June 20th. It's National Bald Eagle Day. So hug a bald eagle. I mean, unless you're a rabbit. It's both ice cream soda day and vanilla milkshake day. Did you know that vanilla beans come from the seed pod of an orchid? The vanilla orchid, the only one that bears fruit. And today's the summer solstice. That's the longest day of the year. So hopefully you're not working. Oh, this day never ends. And that's your daily calendar. I'm Daniel Paulus, and whether you're wrapping up your work day... Look for Bluebell ice cream at all Albertsons food stores and all those supermarkets. Oh, we're back. Buzz is back. Hey, right on, Buzz. Buzz in the morning show, 95.5 The Q. All right, we're all set to get into today's Today in Sound Clip. And we're going to hear from uh, some of the lawmakers in Louisiana who are behind this uh, rule. Louisiana is the first state in the country to require that the Ten Commandments be displayed prominently in every classroom, starting in kindergarten and all the way through college. Gross. I mean, the Ten Commandments don't give good advice. You shouldn't kill somebody. Or I don't adultery. care whether it's good or bad advice. Mm-hmm. You sh- it's not my religion. I mean, but you agree. It's not my religion. That, okay. At least we. Not can- my religion. Buzz, you were saying that the uh, Ten Commandments being in schools is not a big deal. It absolutely is. Nico was making absolutely great points that anybody that isn't a Christian or believes in the Ten Commandments is having their money fund religion in school. You know how you were getting all butthurt and uppity about Nico making dumb comments um, and his arguments were not great and you didn't want to listen to him? For context, that's what you sound like right now. You are making absolutely incoherent comments uh, about this. Here's one for you. Why not let teachers in Louisiana put pride flags in schools? You think that'll go over well? Yeah. Okay. I bet you there are schools somewhere in the United States that do put pride flags up. Yeah. Maybe, maybe they there might be more of them if school was going on in June. Uh, happy Pride, by the way. Do you think this would get the same reaction if somebody said, we're going to put the Code of Hammurabi, which is another ancient text of laws, 
We're going to put the code of Hammurabi. Up. If you mandated it in every, <laughs> if you mandated the, the code of Hammurabi in every classroom, in every school in your state. All right. So yes, I'm sure some people would have a problem with it. Now, is there a history class that I know of that did do, that does put up like that kind of stuff? Yeah. I think They're my history class did that. But they put up the code of Hammurabi. Yeah, I think we 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 might have had a, a less, class project or something like. Yeah. Okay. But, but not permanently. Not permanently, well, these, and not mandated by the government. You know, it's the exact same point that. What? What are you laughing? Because I know you don't believe any of this. You're just you're just a dummy. <laughs> <laughs> I think what you don't realize. Is that uh, a few states, Texas, Louisiana, and Florida, definitely among them, are in a race to see who can first become the first Gilead from Handmaid's Tale. Yeah, who can become the first theocracy. (laughs) Right. It's almost like they're trying to one-up each other over who could become the closest to a Handmaid's Tale type of theocracy. And I got to tell you, I think Texas might be in the lead right now. Uh, All right, you ready for Today in Sound Clips? All right, let's get into it. And now, Today in Sound Clips. All of the news with accompanying sound bites and news actualities. This is Today in Sound Clips. Welcome, everybody. Uh, Let's talk crazy uh, weather in addition to uh, fires that we have in New Mexico and California. Tropical Storm Alberto. Strengthened yesterday morning. I believe it's still a tropical storm, however. The center is expected to reach the coast of Mexico early today. The storm covers a lot of area with tropical force winds of 50 miles an hour stretching for 400 miles. Even though landfall is forecast for the Mexico coast, the system has dumped massive amounts of rain on southern Texas with maximum totals of 20 inches of rain possible in some areas. Governor Greg Abbott issued a disaster declaration for 51 counties in Texas yesterday. Uh, so the, all the wind we got yesterday and, and presumably today, is that like the the front push of the the storm? I am, I am not a, a... I mean, I took a meteorology class, but I would call myself a meteorologist. <laughs> I don't know that that is, has any effect if it's part of the same system, but you know what they say, if a... If a butterfly flaps his wings in Paris, it could cause a hurricane. I, 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 yeah, just wondering. <laughs> I don't know. Emily Wagley, a paramedic in Surfside Beach, Texas, told NBC News the flooding caused by Tropical Storm Alberto has made it impossible for first responders to reach some of the people that need help. It's impossible. We wouldn't be able to drive uh, into Treasure Island, which is right behind you. There's very few houses we can get to on our own. Oh, man. Let's keep an eye on the weather. Uh, let's keep our eye on uh, the forest fire up in Redoso and keep those people in our thoughts. The second death confirmed in New Mexico wildfires. Uh, one person was found in a burned vehicle in the South Fork fire, which caused the evacuation of the town of Redoso. Uh, you, you did a good job of covering this a minute, so I'm kind of repeating what you were saying. Uh, meanwhile, a second body was found on the side of the road near a motel with burn injuries from the fire. Over 200, excuse me, 20,000 acres have been burned by the Fork and Salt fire so far. New, New Mexico Governor Michelle Lujan Grisham said last night that the loss of around 1,400 structures and two lives makes this one of the most devastating fires in New Mexico's history. Bernie Sanders is rallying in Ohio today in support of a minimum wage increase. The move to increase minimum wage is headed to Ohio. Bernie Sanders is attending a rally there today to push for an increase in the minimum wage in the state, which is currently at ten forty-five per hour for non-tipped workers. And the minimum wage in Ohio for workers who receive tips is 525. Sanders is in the state to help support the upcoming ballot initiative in Ohio to raise the minimum wage to $15 per hour. Yesterday, Senator Bernie Sanders uh, was on CBS News. He said the idea of raising the minimum wage is catching on around the country, including in the heartland like Ohio. 
the need to raise the minimum wage to a living wage is something that's catching on all over the country. To the best of my knowledge, every single state ballot item, and there have been over 10 that have called for raising the minimum wage, have won. All right, let's talk about the Ten Commandments in every classroom. Did you just text me? I texted Justin. Well, oh, shoot, you're in, it's in the group text, yeah. Oh, you <laughs> sent it to me, too. Um, <laughs> why don't you turn that off? It's my watch. <laughs> it's not even my phone. It's my watch, man. You would tell me to do that. What What if I did that, Joanna? I, I, oh, yeah, he'd be up in arms on that. Yeah. Well, I wouldn't let it. I wouldn't want it to keep happening. So there you go. You wouldn't let it slide. <sighs> We're going to talk about the Ten Commandments. <laughs> <laughs> I, I think there is something in there. If thou I, shalt turn off notifications. Thou shalt. Respect thy boss. <laughs> <laughs> I respect Kevin and Brad and I'm all your, the people. I'm your I'm your immediate supervisor. <laughs> <laughs> <That's funny. laughs> With, okay, let me get let me get a straight frame of mind here. This is serious. <clears throat> With the stroke of his pen yesterday, Louisiana Governor Jeff Landry put the Ten Commandments into classrooms. The new law requires that a poster-sized version of the Ten Commandments must be posted in all public classrooms from kindergarten to state-funded universities, and they must be posted in, quote, large, easily readable font. The posters must be in place in classrooms by the start of 2025. It must be paid for by donations. Ah, uh, okay. See, that's where they're getting. Uh, that's how they're getting around the, the using the yeah government funds. Yeah, but if you if you make it if you make it a requisite and you don't have the the donations for it, how are you going to do it? Bake sale. Bake sale. So you have to raise enough sale. student car wash. Oh, I'm sure they'll raise the money. Yeah, it's Louisiana. There's a lot of very sure. religious people. But in Louisiana. you know, let's not raise money for new textbooks. Right. Yeah, so, <laughs> that's right. another good point. We had to cancel the music program. Right. But we got them Ten Commandments. Shortly after the bill was signed, civil rights groups and organizations promised to file a lawsuit to challenge the new requirement. In 1980, the U.S. Supreme Court ruled that a Kentucky law similar to this one in Louisiana was unconstitutional. Here is uh, Louisiana Governor Jeff Landry describing what the bill he designed does in Louisiana. This bill mandates the display of the Ten Commandments in every classroom in public, elementary, secondary, and post-education schools in the state of Louisiana. Yeah, that's getting overturned quick. Uh, Governor Jeff Landry of Louisiana says this move is a return to common sense. Today we fulfill our promise to bring drastic reform to our educational system and bring common sense back to our classroom. It's common sense. It's common sense. Don't you just think it's common sense that we teach everybody what they may not believe? <laughs> uh, a couple in California had a pet donkey that ran off. It's been missing for five years. Oh, and my they, God. They just spotted it. What an ass. <laughs> you'll, you'll never guess where they spotted it. Where? Hanging out with an entire herd of elk. <laughs> <laughs> the couple found their pet donkey who had run off five years ago living with a herd of elk. The donkey seemed so happy, they decided to leave him with the elk. They said it would be impossible well it sounds like it sounds like they're just like you know what he looks happy there let's let him go who has a pet donkey that's the first thing that <laughs> people on farms have donkeys. where were these people from northern california huh probably not san francisco <laughs> but yeah you know, just me and my pet donkey walking down the street we had a donkey for a while you did yeah did it have a name Buster. Oh. Eeyore. Here's the video of the couple f see, seeing their donkey with the elk. Here's the donkey's former owner, Terry Drury, talking about finding him. I just bought these elk. 
and there's a donkey with him. It was amazing. It was like, oh my gosh, <laughs> finally, finally we saw him. Finally we know he's good. And it was just a relief. They learned to get along and be each other's family. To catch him would be next to impossible. He is truly a wild burrow now. <laughs> A wild burro. <laughs> <laughs> you must let him run free. Do you think the other elk are like... He's a burro, and a burro must run free. Do you think the other elk think anything's weird? Like, oh, we just picked up a, a straggler. Are they like, oh, brother, it's this guy again. Yeah, it's the, it's the donkey. The dude that doesn't leave. Who invited this ass? <laughs> I've tried to bang him. It's weird. Yeah, I mean, <laughs> he tried to bang me. me. <laughs> Elon Musk says two people have attempted to assassinate him in the last seven months. Here he is at a recent shareholder meeting talking about taking safety precautions so that he doesn't end up, in his own description, like John Lennon. We actually did have two homicidal maniacs in the last uh, roughly seven months come to aspirationally try to kill me and a bunch of other people. And there wasn't like an actual issue that they articulated. They were just, you know, in the homicidal maniac career. So, so I do need to be kind of careful. Forces me to be a bit more sort of standoffish. So now, like, I've stopped signing things because, like, that would be a sure way to like homicidal maniac. I'll just have to sign something and then shoot him. Like, think of like John Lennon, who was like singing about like, "Hey, can't we all just be nice to each other?" And then he got shot, you know, by one of his fans. You're like, okay, <laughs> Let's not, we'll try to avoid that. Why did people laugh? That wasn't funny. What a maybe. Well, he had they, a weird tone of voice when he was they saying it. Thought he expected that them to. I don't know. Working for that company, it seems like you're dealing with somebody who's almost. It's unreadable what he wants. God, I think I can relate. Uh, we have a counterpoint to the last caller who said that they they definitely should not put the Ten Commandments in classrooms. Good morning. This is a uh, born again Christian guy. Oh, I wonder what he's going to say. Gee, I wonder which side he's <laughs> yeah. going to come down on. Uh, Nico, you're wrong. The, the 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 Ten Commandments are important. They're very important. Our Constitution was made only for moral and religious people. No. It is wholly <laughs> inadequate to the government of any other. Okay, I don't know what he's reading from there, but what did he say? That our country is only made... Our Constitution was made only for moral and religious people. Our Constitution was made for only moral and religious people. It is wholly inadequate to the government of any other. Oh, holy. He meant holy. Yeah. Oh. Hugo Black and uh, the United States Supreme Court of the 1947 decision was wrong. There is no such thing as separation of church and state. No such thing. They took uh, Jefferson's uh, comment out of context. Thank you very much. Okay. So there sorry, you go. Sorry, I... sorry, sorry. Born again, again Christian, Christian guy. But I don't know if you're qualified to to make that statement. I believe Supreme Court Justice Black, who authored the opinion, uh, did say it pretty uh, clearly. There has to be a separation of church and state. The, the government cannot advocate for any religion over another. We are a religious, a non-religious government. Well, um... Uh a guy in Florida found that a bank door, a, a bank's doors were unlocked after hours, so he just robbed the place. He went through some drawers but couldn't find any money, so he didn't end up stealing anything. Uh, he still faces burglary charges. They count him, but I want to point out whatever has everybody confused here is who left the bank unlocked yeah. overnight. Here's you know you forget to lock it up every once in a while. <laughs> I forget here's, to lock my door once. You know? Here's uh, Martin County Chief Deputy John Bundiziek talking about who left the doors open when the bank was closed. We don't know whether at noon when the bank employees left, if they accidentally left it unlocked. We don't know if a cleaning crew came after the fact and left it unlocked. We don't know. All right, they just don't know. And a McDonald's employee shot at customers over a drive-through dispute. 
the employee, the McDonald's employee, was arrested after she started shooting at customers following an argument at the drive through window, according to police. Chastity Gardner was booked on a charge of aggravated assault with a deadly weapon. Here's uh, former police chief Orlando Rolon talking about the consequences of the actions. What's becoming disturbing is us hearing more about these type of stories. And um, it's unfortunate because once you fire that round, that round has no mercy. Wherever that round is going, whatever it strikes is going to damage it or kill it. All right. And another story about somebody finding their lost luggage thanks to uh, an air tag. A woman s- says that she lost her luggage at Hollywood Burbank Airport and she was able to track it. It turns out that it was stolen and ended up in a homeless encampment. Here's the uh, lost luggage woman, Ani Grace, talking about finding her lost luggage and finding out that it was in a homeless encampment. When the carrier called me and he said he was at my house and I looked and I saw my air tag twinkling down Western Avenue very slowly, like no direction, really. I knew intuitively something was wrong. Something was way off. I had jewelry, medicine, um, bags I bought from Bali and Peru. In this homeless van, my toiletry bag was flipped upside down, completely empty, makeup bag empty, just (laughs) ransacked through my stuff. Sometime between midnight and 7 a.m., my bag wound up in Homeless Town Hollywood. What? Homeless Town Hollywood. I'm putting the... That on my list of places to visit when I go to L.A. in a couple of weeks. That's pretty much it's just down, all, 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 all downtown, yeah, yeah. And today, the first day of summer, is the longest day of the year. Wherever you live, you'll be getting the Is most. it our summer equinox? It is the summer equinox today, meaning that the day, the daylight will last longer than any other day of the Can year. Can I tell you how much I hate that? Like, it was 8.30 last night, and the sun so, was still, still up. Yeah. I hate it. It doesn't make it doesn't it make you feel like you're living in a I don't know like uh, that you can't get to bed that early. I like it. I, I like the I like it being light out, even though it's not the most conducive for my for my own sleep patterns. Is that because it's lighter outside? That mm-hmm. was when I was growing up. So so we're on the. <laughs> I'll explain this when we come. You know what? Let's take a break because Joanna said break. I'll explain this. Our days. Uh, it gets darker in El Paso than it does in Lubbock, mm-hmm. even though we're in different time zones. And it's because of the time zone right. that it works this way. So when I was growing up in in Oklahoma, which was not on the edge, the back edge, but it was enough back, it would stay light until like this time of year, 9, 10, no. 9, 15. Oh, I would hate that. It absolutely would. Uh, that's when we'd go out and catch fireflies. <laughs> Because we were talking about that. Oh, that's right. All right. Mm -hmm. So uh, let me talk about the longest day, and I'll try and explain this. I've I've tried to do it before. Uh, We'll come back with that and more of the Buzz Adams Morning Show on the way right after this. Music news. Concert updates. Song and album factoids. And, of course, nothing but El Paso's best rock. Oh. Ages 21 and over. See Speaking Rock's Facebook page for more info. Live from the KLAQ studios, the Buzz Adams Morning Show. Courtesy of Glasheen, Vias, and Enderman Personal Injury Lawyers. At GVILaw.com. Oh. All right, uh, we're, I'm going to try... And explain here on the longest day of the year, the first day of summer, uh, how some parts of the country get almost an extra hour of daylight in the summer than other parts of the country. Yeah. Ugh. I don't. Do you do you like it, Joanna? No, I hate it. It makes me feel like it's not nighttime. Exactly. At eight thirty, <laughs> it should, should be, be nighttime. Dark. Yeah. Well, if if it means anything, if if this helps at all, the days are going to start getting shorter starting tomorrow. I don't know. I really get depressed when it's like four fifty, and it's almost dark. like your your automatic headlights come on at four fifty in the afternoon, right? 
That's a little early, I think, for night. It like five to six, the sun should be setting. God. I can remember it would stay light so late in the summer that we would play out till nine, nine thirty, till we had to be called in anyway. Yeah, when the street lights come on at, we at not, eleven at night. <laughs> we didn't have street lights. You didn't right. have street not lights. Where I grew up. <laughs> wow. I was in the country, man. Uh, let's talk about the Rio Doso fire, though. Uh, the displacement of families is one of the biggest issues here, and the shelter fund assists those who suddenly find themselves without shelter. These are people that, you know, a couple of days ago were happily living in their house in beautiful uh, mountains, and uh, they find out they don't have shelter after the fires. Donations go directly to the shelter fund and are tax deductible. So, yeah, we're asking uh, you to help out. The Community Foundation of Lincoln County is a four, as a 501c3 nonprofit organization. And I'm going to give you some place you can go to uh, donate. I know that a lot of our friends, including, I think you said, Justin Underwood, is doing some kind of collection. By all means, uh, you know, if anybody's uh, collecting relief supplies or goods uh, or even money uh, make sure that they are a reputable organization and we have made sure about that with the shelter fund from lincoln county to donate to the shelter fund through paypal go to all right i'll give you a second you might need a pen to write this down kfolc dot org that's the community foundation of lincoln county kfolc dot org to donate money and we'll be talking more about this uh, devastating issue where two uh, are dead at the latest and uh, many many structures have been burned down uh all right so today's first day of summer the most daylight of any day out of the year uh probably sun will go down you know like around 8 8 35 8 40 mm -hmm. is that about what it's getting to now yeah, that seems like that's the time. How was state line last night, Joanna? Because I noticed uh, the winds were really whipping, and it looked like th there was oh rain all Lord. around. I don't think it ever rained in my part of town. But it was so windy and so dusty that I thought they were going to cancel it. Mm -hmm. But they didn't, and it didn't stop people from coming out. Oh, nice. So it went well, well I think, aside from the wind. But once you're inside that patio area, was was were the effects of the wind felt in there? Not as extreme, but it was still pretty windy. But, I mean, people had fun. We it got, was a good time. We got uh, Cool Canyon Nights tonight, another free concert. And it looks like that should probably go on. We do have a chance of rain in the forecast. Uh, about a 15% chance of rain during the day. And it looks like around 6 o'clock... Uh, yeah, we might get a little break from the rain starting at 6 o'clock, which is when you can show up. Uh, doors open at, help me out here, 7, I think. 6. Doors open at 6 at Cool Canyon Nights. It's a free concert every Thursday in McKelligan Canyon Amphitheater. Sonoro Scandalo is performing tonight. So uh, bring your appetite. They got a lot of food trucks and vendors there and plenty to drink, alcoholic or non-alcoholic drinks, your choice. And enjoy the music from Sonora Scandalo on the main stage. It's Cool Canyon Nights presented by West Star. Uh, okay, so, you know, the country split up into, well, counting, counting Alaska and Hawaii, it's more. But in the continental U.S., it's, it's four time zones, right? Uh, Pacific, Mountain, Central, and Atlantic, yeah. Eastern. Eastern, yeah. Yeah, they call it Eastern. Where you live falls somewhere on the Eastern, the Central, or the Western side of your time zone. People on the extreme Eastern side of the time zone, it gets... Okay, so I'm gonna, I've am gonna. i got to show this to you to give it an example. I think I've tried to explain it to Joanna, but I'm not sure she totally gets it. No. Okay, I want to point out a couple of cities, not, you know, not too far from here, a couple hundred miles. <laughs> Hobbs, New Mexico, okay. which is a town in far eastern New Mexico of about 40,000 people. And with a hilarious name. Hobbs. Hobbs. Hobnob. <laughs> <laughs> you got a hobnob? <laughs> I, see, I think it would be hilarious if uh, their neighbor is Seminole, Texas. I think it would be hilarious if Seminole changed its names to Shaw, so they got Hobbs and Shaw. <laughs> oh, my God. <laughs> 
No. Okay, so so you see where, where I'm hovering right here? No. You can't see this? You're gonna oh, Joanna to... can't, but yeah. Uh, this is Hobbs, New Mexico. If you drive a mile outside of Hobbs, you hit the state line of Texas. Mm -hmm. And you're in Texas. Seminole is only about 15 to 20 miles away. Okay. So let's say it's summer. Let's say it's today, June 20th, longest day of the year. Seminole, Texas will stay light until almost 9.30 at night. Ugh. Because when it's 9.30 in Seminole, it's 8.30 in Hobbs. They're essentially the same city. But for one of them, when it's 9.30, whatever sunlight you got, you got at the exact same sunlight in Hobbs, but they're an hour earlier. So do you get that? Mm-hmm. Right. So growing up, we happened to be more on the, we were in the back half of our time zone. So it would definitely stay light until after nine o'clock this time of year. The longest day of the year. Welcome to summer. Is it lighter outside, guys, too? Yeah, right? In the morning? Lighter earlier? Earlier. It certainly seems that way to me. Um, this is the longest day of the year. What are you going to do with all that extra daylight? You should really plan something. Let's ask, uh, anybody got an Alexa? I have one here. Alexa, give us some advice on what to do with the extra sunlight for the longest day of the year. Here are ways you can fill the longest day of the year. Try to assemble anything from Ikea by midnight. All right. Volunteer to help those in need, like liberal arts graduates. Yeah, <laughs> Go to a Subway sandwich shop and do a biogenetic test on what they call tuna. Okay. Good good point. Watch all of the Fast and Furious movies. Hey. Or watch the first one nine times. Same <laughs> difference. Get high and watch the Roomba chase the dog. <laughs> Free up iCloud space by deleting all of those photos of strangers' feet. Yeah, good luck and enjoy the longest day of the year. Hey, it's Double G. Coming up after the Buzz Adams Morning Show. Cooking with the Weber soil just sounds delicious and tastes even better. The Buzz Adams Morning Show, Monday through Friday, 5 to 10. KLEQ and KLEQ HD1, El Paso, a town square media station. Woo! Against the law. It's against the law. It's against the law. Actual crime stories from around the world and across the nation. This is your true crime report. You know, I you hear about something like the following story happening every couple of years or so, and you and every time you hear it, it's like how how do they keep making this mistake? Okay. Vermont police officers staged a surprise mock shooting at a school where a masked gunman burst into a classroom and pretended to open fire. Oh, my God. This was the police who did this. The students were terrified. The school is now apologizing to parents and offering counseling service for kids who were very upset. You hear every few years, you hear what somebody, some local department or somebody Thought decided it was a good we're idea. Gonna, we're going to, you know, get, we got to get through to these kids somehow. So we're going to have a mock mass shooting in the middle of school. And I'm just wondering the, the principal, the superintendent, who approved that from the school? Yeah, seriously. Uh, an 18 year old woman was supposed to get picked up for a first date. It sounds like maybe it was uh, from some dating site. It was the first time they were going to meet. She decided she did not want... She wanted to back out of her date, okay? How does this turn into a crime story? Uh huh. Instead of just telling the guy she had changed her mind, didn't want to go on a date, she instead called 911 and claimed that this guy was her abusive ex. <gasps> Shut up. The 18-year-old woman is named Sumaya Thomas. She was supposed to have a first date with a guy on Sunday, and they have been talking on a dating app. They've been chatting for about a week. 
at the last minute, Sumaya decided she didn't want to go on the date. So she called 911 and told police her abusive ex-boyfriend was outside and had threatened to hit and stab her. <gasps> uh, she also claimed that he, she was pregnant with his child. Oh, my God. What? This seems like way more effort. Than just saying, hey, you know <laughs> I what? Want I don't do want to go on a date anymore. Right. You're ghost gonna him. Have, just ghost, ghost him. Ghost him. Yeah. him. There you go. <gasps> we, we're not often pro-ghosting. <laughs> yeah. That is so unhinged. Well, Super. the date was leaving the scene when police arrived, oh, and they man. detained him on his way out. However, he showed them the messages on his phone, which pr proved the woman was lying. She eventually admitted she'd made it up <gasps> after she, quote, got cold feet and didn't want to meet him anymore. Now she's so facing charges unhinged. for placing a false 911 call and filing a false report. Good. I, I want to see what she looks like. <laughs> Nico. You know what sucks is that now Good. there's going to be, like, other women who are really in that situation. Situa right. And people just, this is why people don't take it seriously. Mm. Did you find her? Yeah. yeah. Uh, did you not see Joanna? Oh, no. What? Oh, honey. Yeah. I mean, just ghost. Just <laughs> ghost or be an adult and say, I hey, mean, I don't want to go on this date anymore. Looks like the date was the one who dodged a bullet on that one. <laughs> I mean, kind of, honey. You were lucky to get a date. <laughs> right. A man in England described as a middle-aged rich guy. Is it your <laughs> your cousin? No. But a rich guy in England is suing Apple after his wife found a bunch of text messages that he had sent to hookers. <laughs> <laughs> Why do you have a cloud function? Oh, my God. It's exactly that. What, what you assumed is exactly what happened. The man says that he turned to prostitutes in the last few years of marriage and would text them using the iPhone app iMessage. But he was always careful to delete the messages so his wife didn't see them. Oh, was he? Unfortunately for them, for him rather, he had only deleted them from his phone and the wife eventually found them on the iMac desktop computer oh. they shared. Well, she wasn't having it. She filed for divorce less than a month later and really it sounds like took him to the cleaners. Now he is suing Apple to recover that money. <laughs> he thinks Apple should have to cover what he lost in the divorce. Look guys, you made a function that was super helpful to other people but really screwed me like, over. It really screwed me. <laughs> Nobody from your company came and explained to me about prostitutes and the cloud. <laughs> uh, so he wants Apple to, to pay for what he lost in the divorce as well as legal bills, totaling more than $6.3 million U.S. The man claims he and his wife were, quote, very happily married for over 20 years and called it a superb marriage. Well, mm. was it? You were talking to hookers. Mm. He says that... He's all, it was fine. She didn't know about the hookers, so things were great. Right. He says if she found out he was cheating some other way, they might have been able to work through it. But seeing the text was too hard on her, and that's why she couldn't forgive him. By the way, there's a differentiation between cheating and frequenting prostitutes, Right. You can frequent you, po prostitutes without cheating. I mean, some people do that, and they don't have, they're not in a relationship. So to equate, mm. you know, just call it cheating, eh, you were... It is cheating. Either way, it's cheating. It's not a different level of cheating. It's, it's a different level of intent, cheating. There was intent, all right. You think it's a different level of cheating? They're both cheating. Both are causes for divorce, right? Yes, but there's a difference there's between like cheating evidence. and hiring there, hookers. There's both a cause for divorce, and they're both bad. How could I explain this to you? Is I know it because they're not. You think they're not doing it? One's illegal. If that's what you want to say. Well, if you if you meet somebody and and you're hooking up with them, you might have some feelings for it. This is purely transactional. I don't Maybe think that matters in the well, because eyes of the law. Just so transactional. I, and there's like no emotion behind it. That's not going to change the. I think that's the partner. Still cheating, my the dude. partner yeah. might oh, have a, the partner might have a lot of extra. Anxiety 
you've been having sex with these women who have sex with dozens, if not hundreds of you other think people, a woman would be more, more comfortable to, with a, a partner who's cheating on her with somebody that's not a prostitute from a health standpoint, I think she might that's not even a good health standpoint that's not even good because that person could be sleeping around with you don't a know lot where that other person right, has been look, Buzz. what what have I said that's so, You're so weird. that you think that <laughs> Yeah, there's a difference in, in cheating. <laughs> People might react differently to those cheating. things. Oh no, no, cheating it's is cheating, cheating, but it's on a whole other level because you're cheating with multiple prostitutes. Yeah, uh, I, mean, I guess I, there's probably some women out there that say, "Oh yeah, but it doesn't mean anything," so I'm not as upset as if yeah, there might be. Pro- uh, his lawyers are even looking into making the case a class action lawsuit if other men come forward. <laughs> the same thing Look, if there's enough guys who have been screwed over. Police in South Carolina are looking for a Waffle House customer who attacked a server when the server took his cigar. Hmm. Man, can you had a smoke knife. at a Waffle House? I'm not sure you can. Maybe in Cuba. <laughs> I don't know. Is, is there any place you can walk into like a, a Golden Corral anywhere in the U.S. and people are just smoking away? Or is that have those days passed us by? I think so. Right? It's weird, right? When you think back and it's like, oh, you went in and there was like smoke everywhere. What's weirder is airplanes still have ashtrays I haven't sometimes. seen an ashtray on an airplane that in 25 years. I haven't seen one They're of those just in 20 shut. years. They're just like welded. No. Uh, Police in South Carolina are looking for a customer who showed up at a Waffle House in Myrtle Beach, South Carolina. This happened earlier this month. He was intoxicated, according to eyewitnesses. The man was drinking and talking belligerently. Are you talking? Uh, I thought you were talking about Justin Timberlake. No. (laughs) Get off Justin Timberlake. Sorry. Then the man pulled out a cigar and started smoking it. A female server confronted him. I guess you're not allowed to smoke a cigar. Right. He, she snatched the cigar and took it behind the counter. The drunk customer freaked, hopped over the booth, and followed the employee to the back of the restaurant. He pulled out a knife, punched her, and when she was on the floor, kicked her in the head and neck. Oh, my God. They did not cut her with the knife, but somebody who was with the guy tried to break it up, and they got cut, leaving blood. So the only person he ended up ki- cutting was the guy who was with him, or the woman who was with him. Who knows? That person left with the assailant. There's they no got one- cut and still left with him? Yeah. There's no word on the server's condition, and it doesn't sound like the police have made any arrests, so I guess they're trying to find the guy. Um... I mean, clearly, you have to know you're not allowed to smoke a cigar. It depends Inside on what, a Waffle House. If it was like 2 a.m. What, what, what the, the rules change after 2 no, a.m.? No, the rules don't change, but the inebriation state does. Uh, I got a story here, and this is a pretty interesting one. Um, when you get pulled over and you think it's for speeding... What's a what's the question that cops ask you? How fast were you going? Do you know how fast you were going, boy? I don't know why that was my characterization. Do you know why I pulled you over? <laughs> do I know why? Do you know why I pulled you over, son? Apparently, and you're and like, I, uh, you, if you guess, they're using it as so you're you incriminating knew- yourself. Was I speeding? The hooker in the back? Yeah, I was going to say, there could be so many things. <laughs> Imagine you try to make a joke like that. Oh, you they... mean the hooker in the back? Uh, please step out of the vehicle. I was joking. Police in Minnesota can no longer ask, do you know why I pulled you over? The idea is to stop people from incriminating themselves. I mean, you might take a guess. Uh, was I speeding? Bingo. And then suddenly you've incriminated yourself. Um, here is Michelle Gross of Communities United talking about the new law in Minnesota. 
We don't want people making spontaneous confessions, and we don't want law enforcement officers to ask people questions except in a formal interrogation setting where they are Mirandized. All right. I never thought of that before, but when the cop asks you, do you know why I pulled you over, he's kind of just giving you the opportunity so to hang implicate yourself. Your, yeah. yeah, to hang yourself. Real quick, let's uh, brainstorm. What would be the worst way to answer that question? Do you know why I pulled you over? The I think, the, the yeah, Joanna's was pretty good. Yeah. <laughs> How about, can you repeat the question? I'm really drunk. <laughs> <laughs> that would be pretty bad, too. Do you know why I pulled you over? Because I make more money than you? Would be a bad one. Because I'm Justin Timberlake? <laughs> Get off Justin Timberlake. <laughs> I will if you will. Ugh. Do you know why I pulled you over? Why? Because you couldn't find some minority to plant drugs uh. on. <laughs> you you play the cop. I'm giving examples of things not to say. So go ahead. Do you know why I pulled you over, sir? You're jealous I finished high school. <laughs> got, that one got Steve. Like. <laughs> <laughs> uh, do, you do you know why I pulled you over, son? You found out what I've been doing with your wife. <laughs> None of those are great Do ideas, people right? People try that, like to try and be funny. I hope not. I, I don't know, man. I don't. <laughs> <laughs> and you're white, right? If you anybody could get, get away, away with, with it, it <laughs> right here. Oh my here. god! <laughs> uh, one more time. Do you know why I pulled you over, ma'am? Oh, I'm a, <laughs> am I a lady in this one? Yeah. Okay, do it. Do it again. I Do you know why I pulled you over, ma'am? Because you're inside donut breaks? You're in between donut breaks? I don't know. <laughs> John Lovitz would be so disappointed I right know. now. Yeah. I definitely know that. All right, there's your true crime report. What we're dealing with here is a complete lack of respect for the law. Artist interview. Zoom Music Discoveries. Celebrating artists' birthdays. Commemorating releases. Champion of all things rock. The part line. Western Light. Makeup of Ultra. White Claw. And Hotel Indigo. Tickets and info at neonpaintparty.com. El Paso's own live and local. The Buzz Adams Morning Show. 95.5. KLAQ. Right, the latest update we have uh, from the Rodoso fires is that at least two people have been killed in the fires. And oh, man. The story that I'm seeing right now says they're also having a, an issues with devastating floods. Yeah, uh, this is a big deal. Yeah. And it, it seems like it all happened so quickly. Like, we were, we were talking on just Tuesday... That they're, they're, they well they had they had uh, started they had started the evacuation on Monday on Monday night. On Monday night. Uh, do you want to read a little more about uh, Justin Underwood's uh, donation drive? Yeah, absolutely. So Justin Underwood at Wyatt and Underwood is having a donation drive today. They're sending up a big semi truck full of supplies that people have been uh, donating, and it seems like they have. Pretty much most of what they need, there is a new request for coffee, candy, and sodas from the first responders up there. So if anybody has uh, some donations and you want to drop them off, you can at 705 Texas Avenue. Do that before 9 o'clock this morning, and uh, they'll take all of They're the, gonna take those the, supplies the up there. So before? Before 9 o'clock. All right. So once again, those items are uh, any, you know, Clothing, food, yes, anything they're needing in that. Uh, but they have right. special requests for coffee, coffee soft drinks, soft drinks, and, and candy right now. Yep, uh, looks like they have a lot of the other stuff. Yo, good morning. So this is your family neighborhood line cook up here at Alan Gordon, New Mexico. Just want to call and reach out to all y'all down there in El Paso and see if y'all can send any donations up this way for the fires up in Rio Doso, Mescalero, Alto. I know a lot of you go up there for vacation houses during the summertime, wintertime, so any kind of donations, perishables, hygienes, uh, cots, blankets, clothes, 
things of that nature be much appreciated. Um, I know a lot of you go up through that way because I serve a lot of you who are in season yours. So if you would, please just anything helps. Thank you. We appreciate it. Y'all have a good one. All right. So that is our friendly line cook who works at Si Senor's in Alamogordo. Oh, cool. And uh, somebody close to where the where, where the uh, mayhem is happening. Right. Uh, here's another call. Let I, me like, get to a I like how calls. he's like, I serve a lot of uh, you. Right. And I think he's right in the sense that like El, pa- El Paso, is, there's probably a lot of El Pasoans who are very connected to Rio Doso. And uh, Mescalero in general. Well, you general. know, you, every time you're up there, you run into people you know from El... It seems that yeah, way to me. I absolutely. always run into somebody I know from El Paso uh, up in Redoso. Yes. Um, thank you for advertising the organization through um, Wyatt in Underwood for donations uh, for the poor people who have lost their Swiss... Their Swiss... Swiss I forgot how to say that. Their Swiss chalet style log cabin and are now having to live in their ranch oh i give her this this guy's implying that it's just vacation luxury right. second and third homes right uh, seems a little sarcastic yeah Ridoso has you know <laughs> you know when you go to Ridoso for the weekend it doesn't close on monday until the next friday right people live there yeah they have a public school system they have churches people have their entire lives there oh um, um, and it's very hard, very hard for them. Um, so please donate your money, please donate money to the Wyatt in Underwood. They're not asking for money. Help the vacation home loss fund for okay. those of us. Okay, that's enough. I mean, it's a lot more than just, I mean, pe- people have, uh, Branches and animals, and there's right, so the, many. Getting the animals to someplace safe yeah. is a real challenge. You know, one of the the nice things that happens whenever I go to, and I go to uh, Rio Dosa pretty often. Working. Work for work. Well, stand up, yeah. And they have just horses that live. They're, I think they're wild horses. They just, I talked about the wild horses when I went up to Cloudcroft earlier this month, and I saw an entire herd of them. You did not go to Cloudcroft. <clears throat> I certainly did. Cloudcroft? Yes, I was in Cloudcroft when I saw the horses. And oh. when I saw the the entire horde, oh, herd of wild horses was that back road between... You weren't in Rio Doso? I was coming from Rio Doso to Cloudcroft oh. at that point. Yeah. How far away do you think Cloudcroft is from Rio Doso? It's not next door. It's like 30 miles. Yeah, it's okay. not next door. I, I just don't know what your issue is. Uh, well, because both of them are like ski... Like resorts and and places where people go to vacation during the winter, I think the most of the fire stuff is happening in, in Mescalero, Rio Doso. So, so to talk about Cloudcroft kind of just confuses the issue. Well, we were talking about the horses, and I was telling you where I stayed, and they are everywhere. Those well, horses, horses. Yeah. I'm told uh, a few years ago they had a big fire, and some of the horses before you know instead of burning to death, they they busted down their stall or jump, you know jumped a fence and somehow got away. Or or their owners just knew there was no saving them, so they released them to give them oh, some wow. kind of chance. Yeah. That's that's how the wild horses got in, started. In, in, yeah. Hey, morning crew, how's it going? Um, I want to comment about that crazy first date. Not just the first dates, man, last one. I had the, an ex, I broke up with her, and about an hour to hour and a half later, I heard this loud noise in my front yard. Um, I had taken a nap. I wake up and there's like five cops and like six firefighters in the front yard. They had just ripped the door off of the gate with the jaws of life. This crazy chick called and told, well, she called 911 and said that I told her that I wanted to kill myself. So they went <laughs> and they went to my house, um, obviously trying to do the right thing and save my life, ripped the door off the gate. I mean, it was just, oh they were about to break through my door when I heard them. So thankfully that didn't happen. Um, 
I told them straight up. I showed her text messages. I was like, look, I just broke up with this crazy chick, man. And anyway, they didn't wind up doing anything. It's crazy to hear that they won the pressing charges against this other chick, man. I mean, I, oh, wow. Uh, but I'm crazy. I actually want to stay with this girl. <laughs> <laughs> Anyways, crazy exes, man. Things happen. All right. Talk to y'all later. Yeah, you're crazy if you stuck with her after that. You're insane. We've gotten uh, quite a few calls about uh, Louisiana has just passed a, a law, I guess, that says that every school from kindergarten on up has to display uh, the Ten Commandments somewhere in the classroom. Mm -hmm. uh, and when I say we've got a lot of call, let me clarify that. Opinions are very split on this one. Uh, people have a lot of comments pro and con for the mandatory Ten Commandments in the, know, in the classroom. You know what's interesting? So well, we're we going to get into we it. We had a caller, right, right, uh, right now? No, in a, in a, oh, yeah. in a minute. I have we, to. we had a caller, though, that was going to, uh, that was, uh, that was telling us about uh, the, one of the cases. He said, Hugo Black, he's a Supreme Court justice, and he said, oh, he's wrong about a separation of church and state. So I went up to look at the different, uh, well, uh, we can get into all of this when we, it's, when we it's, do the crazy. discussion. It's yeah, crazy, yeah. Right, so... Uh, this is already being challenged by the ACLU and a lot of other uh, groups that are interested in keeping a separation of church and state. But as it is right now, the governor of Louisiana uh, signed it into law that every classroom in the state of Louisiana has to have the Ten Commandments displayed. Here is our Hollywood Jeeves made with Joanna Barber. Good morning, Joanna. Good morning. Ian McKellen is expected to make a full recovery after falling off the stage during a performance at a theater in London on Monday evening. <sighs> McKellen is thanking his fans and the medical professionals who offered support following his fall and said in a statement sent by his publicist, quote, since the accident during a performance of Player Keens, my injuries have been diagnosed and treated by a series of experts, specialists, oh. and nurses working for the National Health Service. No wizards? <laughs> <laughs> he went on to say, quote, I am hugely indebted and I'm looking forward to returning to work. Oh, this Ian is... McKellen, 85 years old. You know, Ian McKellen had a very serious fall a few years ago. It he was did? into the cave of the Balrog. <laughs> <laughs> right before he fell, he said, fly, you fools. <laughs> okay. <laughs> All right. <laughs> so this play that he's in, he plays Falstaff in a new version of Shakespeare's Henry IV, adapted mm -hmm. by the award-winning writer and director Robert Icke. Yeah. I don't think Sir John Falstaff was supposed to be 90 years old <laughs> when Shakespeare wrote this it. This is... 85, okay? This is reset, though, in, like, the modern era. Oh, okay. Yeah. A retelling of sorts. Nice. Well, he is expected to make a full recovery. Oh, good. Production company Neon wants to make sure that not a day goes by in the next month that you're not thinking about their acclaimed new horror movie, Long Legs. And that is why Neon has set up a dedicated phone number that you can call to have a little chat with the man downstairs, who happens to be a serial killer dubbed Long Legs. He's played by Nicolas Cage in the upcoming movie, and dialing the number will result in a deeply unsettling pre-recorded message from Cage's latest character. The number, if you dare, is 458-666-4355. I called it. It's weird. What does it... Okay, so this is a movie about a serial killer, and you can call the number for the serial killer. Yeah, and it's really weird. Nicolas Cage stars alongside Maka Monroe, with Monroe playing an FBI agent and Cage playing a serial killer. Long Legs arrives in theaters July 12th. You going to watch it? Yes. <laughs> it already sounds good to me. A Spaceball sequel is in development at Amazon MGM Studios huh. with Josh Gad set to star and will be produced uh, will produce alongside Mel Brooks. The project is in early stages and plot details are being kept under wraps. But earlier this week, Gad posted the news to Instagram and said that he and the crew worship at the altar of all things Brooks and that they are, quote, working alongside Mel to make sure you get what you've waited 37 long years for. What would they do? I, That's a good question. Yeah, 
Are they going to spoof the new movies? I think there's a kind of a thing where it's like, you know, Mel Brooks is... 97. 97. If we're going to, you know, do a a remake or a prequel or a sequel or anything like that, we we should do it now. Because they did a televised version of the history of the world. Oh, that's right. They did. Yeah. And uh, I don't know. I didn't think it was... I didn't think it was great. I heard it didn't get a lot of fanfare. It didn't get a lot of fanfare. I don't think it got a lot of fans either, but <laughs> the the whole thing was, it was spoofing at the time the most popular movie franchise in the history of motion pictures, Star Wars. Uh, do you, okay, so Josh Gad, is he still on the heavier side? Because I'm trying to think of who he would play. Barf? Barf. Yeah. Barf Jr. Barf Jr.? It could be all new characters. You think they're going to bring back any of the original cast? Ew. Bill Pullman. Bill Pullman. He's dead, isn't he? No, that's Bill Paxton. That's um, Bill Paxton. Damn. You <laughs> got in the Bill Paxton. You did Bill it. Pullman. <laughs> Pullman loop. <laughs> Vortex. Yeah. Uh, Jim J. Bullock. He was the pr- he was Prince Valium. Uh, yeah. Prince Valium. <laughs> Prince Valium. <laughs> and John Candy is a no go. Uh huh. Hmm? I'd watch if Bill Pullman comes back. Joan Rivers can't. Play the robot. The robot. No. Yeah. Who was the girl? God, I can never remember her name. Guys, she kind of looks like Jennifer Connelly, but I know she wasn't Jennifer Connelly because she didn't have those. Well, you know. <laughs> <laughs> <Jesus>. <laughs> moving on. Yeah. Ryan Murphy and the creators of Will and Grace have partnered up to develop a new comedy series for Hulu. A long line has been revealed, which has sparked some comparisons to another iconic sitcom from the past. According to The Hollywood Reporter, a pilot was ordered by Hulu for the new comedy show called Mid-Century Modern. And the first cast members to be revealed are Nathan Lane, Matt Bomber, and Linda Lavin. Hmm. The show is being described as a gender-swapped take on The Golden Girls... And will follow three best friends, gay gentlemen of a certain age, who after an unexpected death decide to spend their golden years living together in Palm Springs, where the wealthiest one lives with his mother and a naked Gen Z housekeeper. Wait, Wait, is this supposed to be connected to... Golden Girls, or it does not say it's connected. Oh. It's wait, just wait, wait. being compared to. Uh, we, we glossed over the last thing you said. He lives with his mother and, and a, a naked, naked Gen Z housekeeper. Do those exist? I guess so. Mm. Googling. Remember in that first pilot episode of the Golden Girls, they had a housekeeper. Was it the one? Coco. Oh, that's right, Coco. Yeah. That wasn't the one uh, from Haiti that they all thought was a voodoo uh, practitioner? No, the the housekeeper was a man. Yeah. Okay. Lane is playing Bunny Schneiderman, the wealthy friend who's forever in search of love but needs to be convinced he's worthy of it. Lavin is playing Bunny's mother, Sybil, described as a wise and caring but also critical and smothering. Meanwhile, Bomber will play Jerry Frank, a character who is pure of heart, heart of body, and soft of head. The other main character, the aforementioned naked Gen Z housekeeper, has yet to be cast. What was Linda Lavin's show called? She worked at Mel's Diner. She worked with Flo, who would say, kiss my grits. Oh, yeah. You mentioned it before, but I never saw that What the hell that was that show. show called? The Jeffersons? No. No. Oh. Mel's Diner. Good times? No. Mostly white people. <laughs> uh, Linda Lavin. The lady who used to say, kiss my grits. Yeah, you've mentioned it before, and I never saw that show. <laughs> it's weird. Which shows they decided? Alice? Was it called Alice? Oh, this says Alice, and yeah, it looks like so. a diner. Yeah, yeah, Alice. Never saw that mm. at all. Mid-century modern has not been ordered to a series yet. Thank you for being a friend. <laughs> I wonder if we're going to have the same theme song. <laughs> da, na, na, na. It's not supposed <laughs> to be connected to the Golden Girls in any way. Does it's it take place in compared. Florida? No, Palm Springs. Oh, that's good. They that's got a Palm Springs, Florida. Yeah. Right? Oh, they do? Mm-hmm. Okay. So it could be. So it could be then. Uh, Joanna, I showed Buzz the episode for, of Golden Girls where they have a murder mystery. Oh, yeah. That's a good one. And Buzz what, was laughed it? so hard. That at, one is so funny. At, Not at, now, Ma! At Rose's jokes, though. Because he apparently he likes how dumb Rose is. Look at you. Is that you Betty like, White? Yeah, Betty White's You character. like the Golden Girls. 
I didn't like it when it was out. I wouldn't have been caught dead watching it when no it was taste. on TV. Good writing. So funny. Finally, Kevin Costner almost made a movie with Princess Diana before her death, and now the actor is sharing a fond memory of an interaction he had with her son years later. In a new interview with People, the Yellowstone star discussed a conversation he had with Prince William that probably took place in the early 2010s. Costner had previously been in talks with Diana about starring together in a sequel to The Bodyguard, and William revealed that his late mother, and really enjoyed their chats together. She could have really used a bodyguard, too. Oh, snap. Mm -hmm. Snap. And I ultimately had a very sweet conversation about 15 years later with Prince William. I've never talked about this, but I can because of how I, I very much respect him. But I think it's a story worthwhile about him, and, a, and, and it's a little bit since we're talking about this. And so we met in this room, but it's just someone I met. There's nobody else. He walked up and we sat down and we shook hands. And the first line out of his mouth was, he says, you know, my mom kind of fancied you. She fancied Does him. She fancy That's you. British for wanted to bone. <laughs> 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 he also revealed that during their chats, Princess Diana did ask him, will there be a kissing scene? Be oh, it scene. went so far that he actually he talked, talked on her. the phone yes, with her? that's why he's saying that. Oh. Uh, Prince William told him that his mother enjoyed the chats that she had with Kevin Costner. Was Kevin Costner like a sex symbol in the 90s? He's a hottie for sure, yeah. Still? He's a zaddy, yeah. Yeah, I think, uh, sure. What do you Kevin mean? Costner was a Still? sex symbol, of yeah. course. I, I don't know. I and then he was the bodyguard? I didn't think of him as a Have sex symbol. Have you seen the bodyguard? Um... So I guess he's catching some flack for his new movie, the Western one. Uh, he he cast his son in one of the main roles. Okay. And people are saying, your son has no prior acting experience. Why did you cast him over lots of more experience? He's all because I put in half a million dollars into yeah. this movie. I will cast. Oh, no, that's a, that, that would have been a better response than what he said. What did, oh, he, what did say? he say? He said he's a good looking boy. <laughs> He's like, I make good looking children. I make good kids. <laughs> and uh, that's all you need to be a movie star. The right? old Nepo thing is real. Yeah. Uh huh. Well, with your entertainment news, I'm Joanna Barba. Let's check our late night roundup. Joanna puts this together for us uh, every morning while you are probably still asleep. Joanna is putting together the funniest moments and highlights from late night television. Late night roundup, here we go. Chipotle is selling a new Chipotle boy bowl aimed at finance bros. <laughs> Yeah, a bowl for finance, bro. It's a normal bowl, but instead of building it yourself, your dad just hands it to you. <laughs> Authorities in Hong Kong evacuated a train this week after a snake was discovered on board. Meanwhile, in New York, a train with a snake on it was the only one without rats. <laughs> Some news from overseas of Vladimir Putin and Kim Jong-un just signed an agreement that pledges mutual aid if either country faces aggression. The two leaders also exchanged gifts and Putin gave him a car. Yeah. And because it was for Kim Jong-un, it was one of those little plastic Jeeps. Find out what's going on. Quirky facts about our region. Urgent things you need to know impacting your drive. And of course, nothing but El Paso's best rock. Oh, with double G. Plus, it's simple in pets when used as directed. Zevo, people friendly, bug deadly. Live from the KLAQ studios, the Buzz Adams Morning Show. Courtesy of Glasheen, Vias, and Enderman Personal Injury Lawyers. At GVILaw.com. Wanted to uh, mention again, real quick, uh, the collections for the folks in Redoso, some of whom are without shelter, without supplies. Uh, the shelter fund is uh, tax deductible, donations are tax deductible, and it is run by the Community Foundation of Lincoln County, which is a 501c3 nonprofit uh, organization. So, uh, you know, this is one you know is uh, reputable. The foundation, the Community Foundation of Lincoln uh, County says you could donate to their shelter fund through PayPal and they give the website. So that's C-F-O-L-C, Community Foundation of Lincoln County, 
K-F-O-L-C dot org to make donations. I thought we'd uh, get a few of these calls uh, off of the neckline uh, that have been coming okay. in. A lot of those have been coming in since we talked earlier about the uh, Louisiana is now going to require all schools beginning at kindergarten. Mm-hmm. All schools are going to have to display the uh, Ten Commandments somewhere in the classroom. There, it says it has to be in a legible font and it has to be big enough to be easily read. This goes for college, too. Uh, and they're of, saying that uh, they're going to be funded through donations. The the Ten Commandments that are going to be a display are going to be funded through donations. So I guess they had to get around that because, you know, that way the, they're not using school funds right. to pay for the Ten Commandments. Uh, got a few calls coming in. And I can tell you that the... Uh, the ideas and positions are, are everywhere, <laughs> you know, all over the yeah, place. Yeah, I think it's really split. All right. Let's go ahead and check it out. Uh, how's it going, guys? Uh, quick uh, uh, topic on uh, some topics you're uh, talking about. Uh, Ten Commandments in schools. That's bad. As for the guy that said that the Constitution was Christian and all that stuff, actually most of the founding fathers were theistic rationalists. Not Christian. Mm-hmm. This is the most. This is a very aware call <laughs> by yeah, Padilla. Padilla, that, you know, Padilla absolutely, is obviously, is, he's right on the money about that. And also raising the minimum wage in Ohio. That's bad. Look what happened in California. Prices are just going to go up. Um, businesses are just going to cut back on staff. And also, Buzz, have you been watching the? I, I don't like the Star Wars show. I watched it. Terrible show. Acting, plot, writing, absolutely terrible. All right, thanks. I think he's talking about the Acolyte. Acolyte. Yeah, the new Star Wars TV show. I don't know. There was a super cool Jedi fight <laughs> in the very first scene. and The very first scene is the best scene of the, of the I, show so I far. I thought it... So, last week I told you, I thought it dragged. Yes. This week's episode, I thought, dragged a little bit as well. They need to get some lightsabers going. In yeah, there. I couldn't... We need to see that Wookiee's <laughs> lightsaber. I they couldn't got a Wookie, finish. They got a Wook... I, I couldn't finish yesterday's episode. Yeah, I couldn't finish it this it week. Just, it just dragged so much, which is disappointing because that first episode looked great. Yeah, more lightsaber fights. Why, why are you holding out on the lightsaber fights? It's all about Jedis. I think people are going to uh, be confused if they didn't really hear uh, Padilla what he said. That the founding, so America was not based, we, we're not a Christian country. Uh, Jefferson, for sure, did not believe in the the Bible as the literal word of God. Was they that were, the one who wrote his own Bible? He, yeah, he, he did. Edit, he edited the Bible and only left in the parts that he thought should be in there. So it didn't include any of the Old Testament. So Thomas Jefferson, who basically wrote the Constitution, did not recognize the Ten Commandments as authoritative enough to include in his own version of the Bible. James Madison wrote the Constitution. Thomas Jefferson wrote the Constitution. James Madison might have touched up a little bit of what Jefferson wrote. Jefferson wrote the Declaration of Independence. Oh, you could be right about that then. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, what, what, I'll admit it. That, what, that what could did, be right. But Padilla said uh, they were theistic deists. They believed that there was a God who created creation, all of it, and then stepped back and didn't... Uh, Interfere anymore. Yeah, and, you know, definitely didn't communicate to people. And they saw it, these were the deists who were fr- mostly Freemasons. So this was another common thing. Very, in, I think they thought of themselves as very enlightened people who did not believe in the rule of kings and did not believe in the tyranny of religion. So the... The First Amendment of our United States Constitution says that, quote, Congress shall not make any law respecting an establishment of religion or prohibiting the free exercise of religion. So I I think people forget that America was kind of founded as like a non-religious country because so many uh, people in the, the colonies had come from Britain being persecuted for practicing for, their religion the way they wanted to and they said well, look there's so this is a common thread of this new nation we are it's, it's specifically going to make this not a theocratic country, country or the government's not going to have anything to do with 
promoting any. Now, you'll hear some people, and, and this goes with how Christian nationalism has become a thing. Oh. They'll spin it a different way and say, and you'll, hear, you'll hear it in the calls. I have no doubt that you'll hear it in the calls that they never, you know, it's interesting. They never mention the word God in mm -hmm. the Declaration of Independence or the Constitution. They'll use the creator or, you know, some other term, but they never, they never use the word God. Hi, good morning. It's Stoner Lady from La Mesa. Hey. I just wanted to comment on the Ten Commandments in school. No, no, we, we don't need that. Um, how can I explain it really fast? My nephew's never been to any of that stuff. My sister chose not to do that. We were raised Roman Catholic. I went to a Catholic university where you had to take a theology class every semester. When we took my nephew to a Catholic church and he saw the Stations of the Cross, he was horrified that we used to follow a religion that advocated beating a man and crucifying him. Like and we didn't think. Well, I don't. I don't think most Christians are on the side of the Romans. The Romans so in that who, argument. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Anything of it because you know you're indoctrinated into that kind of stuff at such a young age. She does bring up an interesting point. If you were like 30 and you had never heard anybody, you'd never heard anybody talk about religion before, and they tried to convince you. And then you go see the Stations of the Cross. Yeah, that just, just like, it, <gasps> trying to convince you of anything. So wait yeah. a minute. He yeah, yeah. put. Two of every animal on a big boat. Noah, that is. Right, right, right. It, it, all of this stuff would this not make sense. Pass muster at all. But without getting to the specifics, that's the whole point of having these separate and not in school, is so that somebody who's not exposed to that wouldn't need to be. Now here, here's. A, I was surprised, uh, Padilla. You, you surprised me today. P Padilla's opinion on this was surprisingly dead eloquent. On the money. Yeah, yeah, very eloquent, eloquent yeah. almost. Amigo. We are. We have always been a Judeo-Christian nation, and we always will be. We don't exclude anybody. We don't hate anybody. We don't dislike anybody. But we are Judeo. We are Judeo-Christian nation. Thank you very much. Bye bye. God bless you. Just show me where that's written. Yeah, we're we're not a Judeo-Christian nation. We are a nation of melt. We're a melting pot. We are full of different types of people, mm. whether they're Indian, Hindu, Buddhist. Uh, Frisbeterian. Frisbeterian. Spaghetti monster. Do you know what Frisbeterian is? <sighs> they believe in Frisbees? We Frisbeterians, because I count myself as one, right. believe that when humans die, your soul goes up on the roof and stays there until your dad gets a ladder to take it down. <laughs> That's good. You like, I like that, that one? Yeah, I do like that one. Did you, uh, <laughs> did you see Putin... And Kim Jong Un, the North Korean leader, driving together like it was dictators in cars getting co getting coffee. Uh, well, he had, what? Putin gave that limousine to his new bestie, uh, Kim Jong Un. Uh, they were visiting, and the two uh, dictators uh, shared a ride to car. It looks like they're at the the Tin Lizzy ride at Six Flags. Kind of is what it looks like. Uh, hey, can, can I go back to the Ten Commandments thing real quick? Yeah, real quick, because I'm, I'm looking up this picture. i got to show you this picture of the two of them. Oh, it's hilarious. No, no, that, that is a good picture. And especially get, get Joanna to see it, if, if she hasn't seen it yet. Uh, the, the, you have a neckline call, one of the most recent neckline calls. <clears throat> well, do you have it? Yeah, but you told me not to play them anymore, so I didn't. Your <laughs> Palisade SEL with three leases, three six months with ten thousand miles per year, zero security deposit, lease disposition fee of four ninety five, expires seven six twenty four. The Buzz Adams Morning Show, Monday through Friday, five to ten. KLEQ and KLEQ HD One El Paso, a Town Square Media Station. I found a couple of interesting items in today's newspaper, so I'm going to do perusing the papers. Ooh. Coming up here in just a few minutes. Uh, got some more calls on the uh, decision in Louisiana, which is already being challenged. That would require every classroom, starting in kindergarten, to prominently display the Ten Commandments. Yes. Can you please tell me one thing 
one thing in the Ten Commandments that is offensive to you and would not be appropriate for posting inside a public classroom. Just tell me one thing that is offensive to you about the Ten Commandments. Thank you. God bless you. Jesus loves you. Mm-hmm. Thank you. All right. Um, yeah, I think I started the conversation by saying, you know, I, I think I pretty much agree with don't steal, don't bear false witness. Don't covet your neighbor's possessions for the most part. Well, I the think first one are... is, I am the Lord thy God. Is that the very first one? In, in some texts, yeah. Oh, yeah, I think that's like the very first one. Like, like, you can't have other gods before me or something. Well, number two is, thou shalt have no other gods before me. So oh. if you are a Buddhist or a Hindu... I mean, number two right there is kind of telling you that you're invalid. I Actually, mean, thank you for bringing... I'm not a Hindu or a Buddhist. Thank you for br- bringing that up. Actually, so I looked into one... So there have been several court rulings on this, all the way starting from 1947 to ni- the 1990s. Was that Hugo Black's decision? Uh, that was Hugo Black's decision. Former, former Klansman and the judge who said it was all right to inter Japanese citizens during World War II? He Hugo was Black. that one, okay. but he resent... He, rescinded his support of the KKK and came out strongly against them once he was Supreme Court Justice. Anyways, so there's an opinion called Engel v. Vital. And in the majority opinion, six to one that you could not have a voluntary uh, non-denominational prayer. Non-denominational. And this was a voluntary prayer, morning school prayer in New York. Don't they do this in Congress all the time? Like the president's going to be at a prayer breakfast. You've heard stories where it's like they're going to do this prayer A prayer thing, breakfast prayer is thing. fine, but it's not under the auspices of the government. I mean, the government isn't running that prayer breakfast. I mean, Also, you're not required to go, I would guess. Uh, anyways, so in the court opinion, uh, this is what he said. When the power prestige and financial support of government is placed behind a particular religious belief the indirect coercive pressure on religious minorities to conform to the prevailing officially approved religion is plain now what year was that uh this was 1961 i would guess and 1962 I wasn't, I wasn't alive in 1962 i would guess that our country overall was a was more of a church going country i mean i think yeah, america is still absolutely. a very church going country Compared to especially to a lot of countries in Europe. 22 estate, uh, t- attorneys general argued with this decision or said it was about them. We got uh, Chris. I hope it's a clear line. Hi, Chris. Hey, good morning. How are you? Hey. Doing good. Hey, I was talking to Joanna. I was telling her, does that mean that we're going to have uh, Merry Christmas back inside of our schools instead of Happy Holidays? Hmm. Does it mean we're going to have Merry Christmas? Yeah, I mean, now that you're doing religion. But the other thing I had I had uh, also mentioned was the fact that on the Ten Commandments, if they put them in the, in the schools, during a school shooting, would it deter somebody if they were to read that thou shalt not kill? I, I got to think that that probably is not the thing that would break through to this person who's loaded up and decided to kill, pull off a, huh, like a man. Ten shooting. Commandments is on the wall. Maybe I shouldn't. You're not yeah, supposed exactly. to kill? Huh. Yeah, I don't think that I would. I never heard that anyplace. <laughs> yeah, I don't think that would okay. make a difference. All right, thanks, Chris. Appreciate the call. All right, we'll see you. Uh, and we've got another live call. Way Why don't you give out the number, Buzz? Yeah, sure. Here's the studio line. We'll get to your call first. We enjoy those live calls. And the studio line number is 915-910-4995. That's 910-4995. It is FAM. Hello, FAM. Hey, uh, Buzz, Nico, Joanna. I was just wondering on this Ten Commandments thing. Who is going to explain adultery to little kindergartners and first and second graders? That right? Thy shall not co- <laughs> yeah, covet the, your neighbor's what wife. Uh, adults, uh, mean? What teacher, is covet? Teacher, what's adultery? Mm-hmm. Yeah. Uh, 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 what me and your dad are doing behind your mom's back? <laughs> 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 um, yeah, exactly. Yeah, it's I'm old. not offended. You know, look, like, the the caller, the first caller, there asked was was did I find any of the Ten Commandments? Offensive, and I say no. But I grew up. What about the one that says, "Thou shalt not covet your neighbor's slaves"? Okay, the the one that I remember. uh, Thank you, fam, for the call. I appreciate it. By the way, all right, right, no problem. 
I remember thou shalt not covet. And covet means you want to have something that somebody else does. Right. Um, does it go on to enumerate the various things you're not supposed to covet? Oh, it does. Your neighbor's one of wife. Them. Yeah, so the first one says, uh, <laughs> thou shall not covet thy neighbor's house. House is first. <laughs> then it goes down, thou shalt not covet thy neighbor's wife. She's second. First, don't covet the house. You see, that should have... Some of these don't make sense if they're coming from an almighty being. You already covered that with adultery, right? And he's like, it bears repeating. <laughs> it bears you, twice. Right? Say it twice. I know how you men are. Finally, thou shalt not covet thy neighbor's slaves or his animals or anything of thy neighbor. Seems like you could have just said that. Rem remember the Sabbath day to keep it holy. What if I... What if I don't find... I do. I can't... Isn't the Sabbath the Saturday? Sabbath, the Sabbath Saturday, Saturday is the Sabbath. So, in so the, even in, Christians and Catholics aren't following... When the when uh, the Ten Commandments were written, the Sabbath was Saturday. Yeah. And I uh, think of the Sabbath now as Sunday. I don't know if, if that makes really, God really mad or if he doesn't care, but I do keep it holy. Usually 18 holes. Very <laughs> holy. <laughs> And nobody is saying religion's bad. Nobody is saying that any of this is bad. What we're saying is it has no place in the pub in a public school. If you're a private Catholic school, a private Episcopalian school, whatever. Ah, uh, yes, that's a good point to point out because a lot of people in the app chat are saying like, well, you know, you could still put it in schools and stuff, and it, even in private schools. I'm like, well, that's the difference between private and public schools. Go ahead and put it in your private schools, but the public schools should be a no go. Because the public schools are administered by our government, and the government should have nothing to say on religion. It should be completely neutral. Yeah, there has been a big shift in kind of Christian nationalist thinking where they where they deny that. They're trying to tell us that the government should have they a say. They really want the church making the rule, and it just it doesn't add up, guys. I'm it, sorry. Because there's no way that a Muslim... Hindu, Buddhist, or Jewish students are going to feel comfortable standing up and, and, and looking at this every day. I think most people just ignore it. I think it'll just be on the wall. And, uh, yeah, but... Most it, people are just going to... You, you, yes. They had the periodical... Periodic table. The periodic table. I never, periodical table. It's not like I ever I understand that, that memorized but, it. But that periodic table, what did it say? This is a classroom for science. If you have the Ten Commandments up, it is saying something subtly. It's saying, oh, yeah, we all support this form of Christianity. You know, and, people and in many communities, probably everybody does. I mean, like in, in rural communities, country communities, probably everybody in that school probably believes pretty much the same kind of stuff. Right. But there's, I would hate to be the one Muslim family where, because when I was growing up, if you met a new kid... Like one of the, even if you were not yourself that religious, your family was, and one of the first questions you would ask is, where do you go to church? And right. you expected there to be an answer that, oh, I'm meth, I go to the second of it, you know, whatever it was. I'm atheist. Never heard that. Really? No. You never heard about anybody being atheist before? I, I remember in ninth grade, we had a debate asylum. We were going to debate, uh, Gosh, I don't know, like uh, the theory of evolution or uh, creationism. Not not one single kid wanted to be on the side of evolution. Like nobody wanted to take that upon themselves. Everybody believed the creation story mm -hmm. at that point. You know, you know, it's also interesting. And is the teacher was like, well, you don't have to believe it. It's just. Uh, you don't have to believe it. it's just a debate exercise. But, you know, nobody wanted to do that. Who do you think has a bigger heart on for these Ten Commandments? I'm sorry. <laughs> That's probably blasphemous right there. Who who do you think? <laughs> who, who, who gets really hard for these yeah, commandments? <laughs> so I happen to know I was born in Louisiana. There's a lot of Catholic uh, influence in uh, Louisiana. A lot right. of Catholic. Do you think Catholics 
get behind this as much as Protestants? Because I got to tell you, as a Protestant, this really smacks of the the Protestant super church type of movement. I, I wanted to bring this up early when when the country was founded and and people were coming to America for r- religious freedom. They weren't fleeing Muslims. They weren't fleeing. Jewish people. They were fleeing other, other Christians, Christians who didn't like the kind of Christianity, Christianity. they were. So if, if you don't realize that if you're Baptist, you used to hate Presbyterians. Presbyterians used to hate Episcopalians. They all used to hate each other. Well, in the lead up to, to the 1700s, uh, a lot of it had to do with Protestantism. But then as soon as, so the Protestants are like, we don't we don't believe what the Catholics teach, and uh, you know people but get even executed. The, the pilgrims didn't believe what it, the Anglicans were but saying. But it didn't take long for them to believe. It's like, okay, we both don't believe the Catholics, but I also don't believe with you. Don't believe the same as you to such an extent that, uh, yeah, I'd also be, be, be willing to go to a religious war with you over right the stuff that we mostly. So agree it's with. best if we keep all religion neutral, so that even the different Christians. I have an update here for you. Uh, Justin Timberlake was arrested for oh DWI. Oh, my God. JT, man. <laughs> yeah, shut up, Joanna. <laughs> Justin Timberlake's Get lawyer. Off Justin's D. Y- you first. <laughs> Justin Timberlake's lawyer says he is looking forward to, quote, vigorously defending him against his DUI charge. I might have said DWI. I guess, so I heard reporting that he uh, told the police officer arresting him, man, this is going to ruin my tour. <laughs> it's going to ruin my that, tour. That the, the officer was too young and, and didn't, didn't recognize, recognize him. him. Oh, my God. Does that make you guys feel old? Kind yes. Of, yeah. <laughs> um... Here's a quote from Justin's attorney. Justin will have a lot to say at the appropriate time. He is currently awaiting full discovery from the DA's office. Uh, Justin is expected in court on July 26th. He is receiving support from some of his famous friends. Uh, On CBS Mornings, Gail King said, quote, Justin's a really, really great guy. He's not an irresponsible person. He's not reckless. He's not careless. Clearly, this is not a good thing, but he knows that. Supposedly, he had just one martini, but it was a very strong martini. And yeah. yeah, it depends on how big the martini glass was. And, well, I guess they, they went to the bar where they served that martini, and they were like, yeah, yeah, this is our, our signature. strongest signature. Billy cocktail. Joel, who famously had a couple of uh, DUI or DWI incidents... Uh, he was interviewed by a local station, and Billy Joel said, Judge not, lest you be judged. By the way, that's in the Bible, but it's not a commandment. <laughs> <laughs> uh, so anyway, uh, they're awaiting full discovery. That means when the DA shares with the defense attorneys everything that they have in this case. But uh, apparently... Uh, until July, whatever the date was, I said in July when he's going to appear in court, Justin Timberlake can't keep his driver's license or drive during that period. Won't get your license back. <laughs> Just one martini who came up with that. Bloodshot, mugshot, you had shots, that's a fact. The cops like Justin who? Aw, oh, snap. Should have took a lift. <laughs> Take a, Take a break here. We'll come back. We have news headlines with Nico Ajimian on the way. The second death has been confirmed in the New Mexico wildfires. All the details in news. But if anybody would like to donate, please go stop by the offices of Wyatt and Underwood this morning before 9 o'clock. Uh, and you can get there. If you can get there in time, they're shipping all those uh, supplies donations. and donations. Right. Up and they're to, asking uh, for supplies specifically, uh, you know, Blankets and food and coffee and right. things like that. Uh, right now, the guys that are fighting the fires are asking for uh, sodas for their meals, coffee, and candy to kind of help them. These are for the firefighters. Right. Okay, so uh, the reason we were, we're making this urgent is because I guess the, whatever they've loaded the truck with at 9 o'clock is taken off and going up to Rideau's yep. to uh, bring relief. So head on over to 705 Texas Avenue before 9 a.m. and... Uh, 
uh, that way you can get your your donations. Yeah, take those donations by, but 9 o'clock is when they plan on sending them up to Rideau. So, all right, take a break. We'll come back with more of the Buzz Adams Morning Show on the way right after this. Coming up after the Buzz Adams Morning Show, Glenn Garza and Daniel Polis. Three series, three thirty and sixty four, and take home a gas char grill or a blackstone griddle with purchase. Cost of you at GMC Montana and Airway by the airport. Broadcasting in El Paso to El Paso. The Buzz Adams Morning Show on ninety five five KLAQ. have enough traffic to tell you about. Here's Joanna Barbo with a look at your morning commute. Good morning, Joanna. Good morning. Oh, it looks like I-10 West has made your backup uh. this morning. Two different collisions are causing delays from I-10 West at Reynolds and then I-10 West at McRae. Backup does extend towards Lee Trevino. So if you're uh. heading in that direction, expect delays or find an alternate route if you're heading that direction this morning. Again, that's I-10 West starting at I-10 at Reynolds, extending past Lee Trevino. Joanna, do you, do you ever hit traffic in the morning coming this way yeah no that, that's kind of the benefit of such an early shift there was a time when i was doing the overnight yeah. where they would have a lot of closures overnight like on your way in on work? the way into the oh yeah shift. because it's they because do construction like at night yeah. construction at night I'm going to throw this the out there. I don't know specifically. I know that we were without power last night. Like I woke up in the middle of the night and not one thing in your house was working that requires electricity uh, was working. Oh, and no. I guess uh, a transponder blew. But I noticed on the way a lot of branches in the road. And I'm talking about not only branches, some trees had been. <gasps> those winds. Yeah, those yesterday. winds had brought down like a, one of those 50 foot tall, long, skinny trees some people have. Mm -hmm. So just be aware that there might be some hold up because of that right. in your neighborhood. But uh, we got it's our power back for, yeah. around four o'clock this morning. Uh, Did you say a transponder? Transformer? <laughs> Transformer doesn't sound right. That sounds like a robot that's going to turn into an 18 wheeler. Yeah, either. you said transponder. That's not the right uh, one. Transformer, I think, is the right one. Okay. <laughs> uh, before we get into news, do you want to take these calls about the Ten Commandments in the classroom? Yeah, that way people, if, if they have any more thoughts, they can call in while I'm doing the news. And to the man who told me to F off, that wasn't very Christian of you. Why did he tell you to F off? Because he says that we're being a-holes and mocking God and the commandments. And I told him that is not at all what we're doing. If you want me to, I can. But right. I don't and think that's what we're doing. And he told me, F you, you fat bitch. <gasps> you know, uh, sir! And, sure. But he started off with, like, there's a lot of Christians listening. And I'm like, well, that wasn't very Christian of you, that sir. That certainly is not. Uh, should I play and the clips? which God are you talking about? <laughs> Probably. There's the, different gods. The old hateful smitey one. That's the demiurge. Mm. Uh, do you want to hear any of the audio from uh, the governor of Louisiana? Sure. Uh, yeah, let's do this here so I don't have to do it in news. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> uh, Louisiana Governor Jeff Landry. Uh, says uh, that he he signed a bill that would make it a requirement to display the Ten Commandments in every classroom starting in kindergarten. Uh, Landry said this is a, this move is a return to common sense. Today we fulfill our promise to bring drastic reform to our educational system and bring common sense back to our classroom. All right, a little bit more. Uh, Louisiana Governor Jeff Landry described what the bill he signed does in the state. This bill mandates the display of the Ten Commandments in every classroom in public, elementary, secondary, and post-education schools in the state of Louisiana. You know, if I was a teacher in Louisiana and I had to put up the Ten Commandments, I would, and then I would put up Hammurabi's Code, the uh, Hadiths of uh, Muhammad. The draconian laws, the original draconian laws. The original law. draconian laws. I would put up the tenets of Siddhartha Buddha. I if would, you were a teacher and asked for donations for that, I would donate to Right. It. I would put up the spaghetti monster, even the Satanist. I would the put up Satan the Levian yeah. Satanist Ten Commandments. In kindergarten. Yeah, why not? <laughs> yeah. You want the other ones. <laughs> okay. Uh, do you want to play calls? Yeah, we have a few calls that are uh, in support. Uh, 
so I think a lot of people one call one guy earlier called said what what's what's objectionable I don't find the Ten Commandments objectionable I grew up learning them and memorizing them and all that stuff and for the most part it, it does seem to be pretty good advice uh, not to live not just per personally but for cultures oh uh, it's practice. objectionable because what if I don't you came from a place where 99 percent of people were all Christians or Baptists, but there's a lot of schools that will have a diverse makeup of what the student's religion is. Right. And having that up there puts an unspoken pressure on them right, to me, conform. Let me hear what people are saying. I'm, I'm interested. Yes, uh, I think that the Ten Commandments should be in the classroom. I mean, the Ten Commandments is a good guideline no matter what religion you are even if you're no religion it's a good guideline to leave a, a moral and judicious life and what better way to start people it, than when they're young and start getting getting them to learn that and behave that way when they're young if more people followed the ten commandments this country wouldn't be in the shape that it's in. Oh. I mean, look at the corruption on our government and, yeah, Greg, and just yeah, the people in general. I mean, we're going to hell in a handbasket, you know? And so I'm, I'm for the Ten Commandments in the classroom. Thank you. All right. I'm just going down the list here of ones that I, if, are there any commandments that I would have any problem with? Uh, observe the Sabbath. <sighs> I do. You don't observe the Sabbath. You're not supposed to. You're not supposed to take a car. You're not supposed to. <laughs> okay. <laughs> now you're nitpicking. I can observe the Sabbath in my own way, and that is by communing with nature <laughs> in the form of eighteen holes of golf. <laughs> uh, uh, thou shalt not take the name of the Lord thy God in vain. I've never understood that. What that means? What that, taking the Lord's well, name in vain? Yeah. I think you're not supposed to use it unnecessarily. In vain means for personal satisfaction, I think. We weren't allowed to say, oh, my God. Like, that was a bad enough thing that we would get punished for that. And I hear people say, oh, my God, all the time. And I have to remind my daughter, don't say, oh, my God, because that was... In front of your mom. Yeah, in front of my mom. Uh, we have a live call. Remember the Sabbath. Keep it holy. As I told you, I do that. Honor thy father and mother. That's great advice. I mean, thou shalt not murder. Thou shalt co not commit adultery. Thou shalt not steal. I wonder how many. You know what would be fun? But funny? I think I can find each of those statements as hadiths or something. In some other re religious That, that Muhammad said. So. Well, it, he, Muhammad was influenced by both Christianity and Judaism. I know, but I guarantee you the same people that would like Ten Commandments would, have pitch would a fit, if, fit if the Hadiths of Muhammad. Uh, Julian, hello. Hey, how you doing, bud? Doing hey. good. What's up, Julian? So, my two cents on the whole school thing. Um, you know, we've been doing the Pledge of Allegiance for however long, and that already brings you know, God and... Uh, yeah, ah, yeah but you know what? Hold on. Right. Wait, 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 hold on, though, Julian. Uh, the under God in our Pledge of Allegiance is fairly recent. Was only added in 1954 by President Eisenhower. It was not standard before then. Oh yeah, but that's 75 years. Yeah, no, sure, but I, sure. I, I accept your point. We all get up, which to me is kind of like low key indoctrination. You're going to get up and repeat this thing to the point where you don't even. Know that you're right. You don't even think about the words you're saying. It's just like this well, loyalty you know, oath. I growing up, I grew up uh, Jehovah's Witness. Um, you guys probably weren't allowed. Like you got an excuse. You didn't have to do this Pledge of Allegiance, probably right? Exactly. But it was yeah. something I was very much aware of as a child. You know, most people weren't, but it was something that I was aware of. And you know, it's to think children at that age aren't thinking about that is really something that I guess that we're not looking at because hmm. we're all assuming that, you know, kids are just, you know, kids and don't care. You know, growing, like I said, this is something since I was in elementary that I understood and I didn't say the Pledge of Allegiance. Um, I would stand up and, uh, you know, I show respect. I just, I, I wouldn't say the actual pledge and things like that. And it was something where as a kid, you know, 
I had to kind of deal with this type of situation from an early age, you know. And oh, so interesting. It, it's new to people, but, you know, it's not new to everyone. You know, this is definitely something that it's it's only getting worse. I mean, as far as the uh, political scene goes, it was inevitable for something like this to happen, you know, and it's uh, it's sad. It's super- Wait, you're, trying- you're saying that the state of politics right now has gotten to the point where it's where, uh, introducing some type of Christian religion into the political conversation was was bound to happen. Absolutely, absolutely. I mean, it's it's always been a part of the conversation. It's just now on the forefront. You know, people aren't afraid to say it, and they think you know they're uh, when they do do this. It's the, you know they're they're being what's the word I'm looking for a, a, a patriot and things like that. Uh, I think what the, the word we're talking about here is Christian nationalism, and you're right. There's this stripe of so-called Christian nationalism that is on the rise. A lot of people have, a, 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 you know, a positive reason for, for doing this. I mean, we have to look at that. It's just, it's forcing people to do something, you know, when it, 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 you shouldn't bring God into school and politics and things like that. It's just an easy way for people to do it. And, mm-hmm. you know, with, with the guise of it's, you know, it's the right thing to do. And, you know, it's, I mean, I can see why they would want to do it, even if they're being super innocent about it. It's just. It so I, I, make it right. I oh, went absolutely. to uh, grade school, I want you to know, Julian, with some kids who also, they didn't stand for the Pledge of Allegiance. They stayed in their seat. And were they Jehovah? Yeah. No, they yeah. were Native American. Oh, They right. were like registered tribal members of the Creek or Cherokee tribe, and they did not stand for the national anthem. I imagine they, they have some bitter feelings. A lot of flack for that, you know, and... and Going to church as a kid, they would tell you, yeah, go ahead and stand, show them a little bit of respect, because it, it upsets people, you know? And they, they look at it as, as disrespect, when in actuality, you just, you know, you guys don't see eye to eye, and there's nothing wrong with that. Yeah. You I didn't agree. get to have birthday parties or anything, did you? Uh, you know, I, I did have a birthday party growing up. <laughs> like <laughs> one, one in your entire I life. Right? Yeah. Well, I mean, as an adult, you know, I, I, I kind of, stopped with following you know all the practices but um growing up my folks actually kind of gave us like one of everything like we celebrated a christmas we celebrated this and that all right good news guys y'all get to do halloween this year <laughs> you know, i never felt left out to be honest with you i never did you know kind of economical situation it was all right but i never really felt left out i, I it, it was again an understood thing and you know I, I as weird as it is it wasn't a big deal for me yeah, no, I could understand that. There's so many. There, I mean, uh, we observe birthdays, kinda, but I know what you mean. There were plenty of things like I never went to a school dance because we weren't supposed to dance. Our particular stamp of religion said you're not allowed to dance. So, uh, oh I, man, I you were a footloose guy, huh? Everybody <laughs> says that. He's the footloose Everybody guy. Everybody says that. Uh, all right, thank you, Julian. <laughs> Thanks for the call. Hey, no worries. Have a great one, guys. All right, we'll see you. Um, I guess we got to take a break now. Can I play this last call? Sure. All right. It's a quick one. All right. We have staked the whole future of American civilization, not on the power of government, far from it. We have staked the future of all our political institutions upon the capacity of each and all of us govern ourselves according to the Ten Commandments of God. James Madison, primary author of the U.S. Constitution, America's fourth president. Thank you very much. So wow, he that, went and researched that. Oh, uh, we, we, we researched back. <laughs> right. So th- that's one thing. We're, we're a show that researches back. If we, don't, if we seem like we're not quite ready, it's probably because we're, we're fact-checking something. So that would be pretty meaningful if the guy who primarily wrote, wrote the Constitution, Constitution expressed those views. Here's the problem, though. Okay. No such quote has ever been found among any of John Madison's writings. None of the biographers of Madison, past, present, or during his own time, have ever run across such a quote. Uh, It looks like this quote was actually made up and attributed to James Madison in 1997. Uh, Actually, yes, and it was re-broadcast by Rush Limbaugh. Yeah. 
Uh, but it's a fake quote. It, right. <laughs> it's, a, it's a fake they, quote. They can't find any evidence that James Madison ever said uh, anything like that. So the whole staked our future and that it had to do with the Ten Commandments is apparently <laughs> not a real quote. That's an alternative fact. While you're working away, we're working for you. Our job starting at tomorrow. When you need X 27cash.com. That's 27cash.com. 27cash.com. Live from the KLAQ Studios, the Buzz Adams Morning Show. Courtesy of Glasheen, Vias, and Enderman Personal Injury Lawyers. At GVILaw.com. We're going to jump right into news, but I... Just wanted to mention, uh, probably for the last time, uh, they're going to leave in about 15 minutes. That's the truck that's heading up with supplies from El Paso uh, to Redoso for uh, the fires. Not only the victims of uh, the fires, but also the firefighters have asked specifically for a few things. So they're trying to load this truck up. And you'll give me the address again. It's at the law offices of Wyatt Underwood. Yeah. Yes, 705 Texas Avenue. Right. So if you've got some stuff to donate, I think some of the firefighters have been asking for coffee and soft drinks. Uh, anything that you have that you can donate, uh, they're going to send that truck up to uh, Ridoso. They're now, well, we'll get into the news uh, and talk about it. So uh, here we go. Let's go ahead and, and get the news started this morning. Good morning. Good morning, Mary Sunshine. And how are we today? And here is Nico Jimmy with our top stories of the day. Good morning, Nico. Good morning, Buzz. Good morning, Joanna. Good morning. The first named storm of the 2024 hurricane season claimed its name yesterday. Tropical Storm Alberto strengthened yesterday morning, and its center is expected to reach the coast of Mexico early today. While it's just a tropical storm, there are two things making it more impactful than it might otherwise be. First, the storm covers a large area with tropical storm force winds of 50 miles per hour, stretching over 400 miles from the center. Sheesh, that might be the reason yeah. it's getting so windy here. The second feature of Alberto that makes it a large problem is the torrential amounts of rain. Even though landfall for the eye is forecast on the Mexican coast, the system has dumped uh, massive amounts of rain on southern Texas, with a total of 20 inches of rain possible in some areas. Yeah, that's going to be... Those are f flood level rains. I think they're already experiencing some flooding. Uh, Governor Greg Abbott issued a disaster declaration for 51 counties in the state yesterday. Quote, to ensure Texans and at-risk regions have the resources and personnel needed to respond to the storm. Alberto is expected to dissipate by tonight. Here is a paramedic talking about the flooding. How it hurts. It's impossible. We wouldn't be able to drive uh, into Treasure Island, which is right behind you. There's very few houses we can get to on our own. And our very own Hurricane Alberto is still here. Yeah. Can you believe that? Yeah, the, guy, the overnight Alberto. I think he... His name starts with an H, but it's homeless Alberto because he sleeps here sometimes. <laughs> he was asleep. Yeah. Oh, Alberto. I went in there. Steve was in there with, with uh, Mike Gopin. I, I went into Alberto and I'm like... Who do these guys think they are just crashing into your bedroom? <laughs> <laughs> hey, that was my bedroom originally. That's true. Remember, I used to spend the night after bingo nights? Yeah, you <laughs> and you would wake me up by kicking me, <laughs> and I would bring pillows. That was not yeah. nice, Buzz. Well, the wildfires burning in New Mexico have now been confirmed to have taken at least two lives. One person was found in a burned vehicle in the South Fork fire, which forced the evacuation of Rio Doso, while a second body was found on the side of the road near a motel with burn injuries. With well over 20,000 acres burned by the South Fork and Salt Fire so far, Governor Michelle Lujan Grisham said last night that the loss of around 1,400 structures and two lives make this one of the most devastating fires in New Mexico history. And uh, like Buzz was saying, uh, Justin Underwood is taking off at 9 right now to go and uh, drop off the oh, donations. he sent us an update and says that this load is already full. Already full. There you go. And that they want to give out a big shout out to Socorro PD. Socorro PD. Socorro PD. Thank and you so LJ's, much. And he says. And Ellen J's? Yeah. Oh my gosh. Thank you, Ellen Amazing. J's and Socorro PD. Since we're uh, talking about it, let me give you the... Uh, Website for the Community Foundation of Lincoln County. 
you can donate through PayPal on their website, and it is going to go to assist those without shelter and people who need a place. You know, they don't have anything to eat. They can't get back to their house. So to donate to the shelter fund, it is the Community Foundation of Lincoln County, and their website is cfolc.org. That's C-F-O-L-C. Dot org and you can make a PayPal donation to the Shelter Fund of Lincoln County. That's right. In politics, the move to increase the minimum wage is headed to Ohio. Senator Bernie Sanders is attending a rally in the state to push for an increase in the minimum wage in the state, which is currently ten forty-five per hour for non-tipped workers and five. 25 for those who do receive tips. Sanders is in the state to support an upcoming ballot initiative to raise the minimum wage to $15. $15. The need to raise the minimum wage to a living wage is something that's catching on all over the country. To the best of my knowledge, every single state ballot item, and there have been over 10 that have called for raising the minimum wage, have one. So. No comment. What, what do you think minimum wage was at the very first radio job I worked? Because I made minimum What's a pence? Wage. Like five pence? It, it, it was two shillings. Two shillings. It, it's under... It, <laughs> three it's, quid. It's under a shilling, but more than... Th- no, it was three thirty-five an hour. <laughs> three thirty-five. That was legally the yeah, least they could pay. Yeah, but gas was five cents, wasn't it? No, but at that time, it was around a dollar. Yeah. And what was your rent? Uh, mom and dad continued to let me live. Okay, at what home. was the rent at your first place that you lived? Did that I paid for? Yeah. Yeah. 300 a month. Wow. That sounds nice. That sounds like the good old days. Uh, well, those, those prices were outrageous and exorbitant. And everybody would say, when I was a kid, it only cost $5 for rent. <laughs> <laughs> well, speaking of higher pay, over 3,000 nurses in Oregon at six different hospitals spent their second day picketing in what organizers say is the largest nurse strike in the history of Oregon. Providence, the company that operates the six hospitals, has been in negotiations with the nurses since December. But according to Scott Palmer, the chief of staff with the Oregon Nurses Association, they have not been able to get Providence to come to a fair contract. The striking nurses are asking for better staffing at the hospitals and more competitive wages. The strike is planned to run through today. Well, one of the problems with healthcare worker strikes is that they're some, oftentimes ineffective because the healthcare workers to strike efficiently would require them to not do their job and their job is to, is save, to people's save people's lives. lives so they are oftentimes i mean we call them essential workers essential during workers, the pandemic right. for a reason so a lot of times they won't be able to do their full striking capabilities right or you can't like make your employer feel the pain while continuing to because they're people help. they, they yeah, will yeah. they're not going to want people to die on their watch now, this is an interesting story. After this story, we, it's probably a good idea to take a break. Sure. Some boaters were out on the water off the Florida Keys when they noticed something in the water. Cocaine. Meth. They pulled it out and found that it was a package that can- contained... Meth. Cocaine. According to the Monroe County Sheriff's Office, approximately 21 individually wrapped kilograms of... Cocaine. Meth. Suspected cocaine. Ah! <laughs> Samuel Briggs II with the U.S. Border Patrol posted it's a Florida. video of the packages being wheeled away <laughs> on X with each labeled with a picture of a bald eagle. That's their new marketing. The estimated street value, $1 million. God. And who were the people? Just citizens out boaters. Boating? The boaters just fishing. How many people they do you hope think? That would have turned it in or versus keeping it. How many times have we not heard about this happening because the people are just like... Hey, we free got, cocaine! We got enough cocaine for, like, 20 years. <laughs> uh, today is the first day of uh, summer. Barely? It's, it's barely the first day of summer. And it's the uh, the longest day of the year, so more hours of daylight. Now, of course, that doesn't count if it's cloudy where you are, but nonetheless, you've got more hours of daylight and gradually, the days will start getting a little shorter. Daylight, I'm talking about. Uh, a little shorter. And then I guess we're still doing the time change this year. What? Are we not? I, I don't know. I feel What's like it? we're close. Yeah, I think we are. We're, we're falling back in the fall. But I think the days are numbered for that. You know? 
I think I hear too many people talk about getting rid of the time change, but you will have extra daylight. It'll probably be light outside until what would you say, Joanna? You were out last night, eight thirty, eight forty. Eight thirty. Yeah. Eight yeah. thirty. You'll get uh, enough daylight to stay out. Uh, how are you going to fill the fill those hours is up to you. Hey, Alex. Uh, not Alex. What's the what's the vocal assistant here called? Alex. Hey, Al- hey, Alexa. Give us some things to do on the longest day of the year. Here are ways you can fill the longest day of the year. Mm-hmm. Try to assemble anything from IKEA by midnight. Yeah. Volunteer to help those in need, like liberal arts graduates. All right. <laughs> Go to a Subway sandwich shop and do a biogenetic test on what they call tuna. Watch all of the Fast and Furious movies, (laughs) or watch the first one nine times. Same difference. (laughs) Get high and watch the Roomba chase the dog. Free up iCloud space by deleting all of those photos of strangers' feet. (laughs) What? Good luck and enjoy the longest day of the year. Hey, it's Daniel Paulus. I'll be along starting at 3 with everything from ACDC to Alice in Chains to God. Go to ZipRecruiter.e. That's ZipRecruiter.com slash free. ZipRecruiter.com slash free. The Buzz Adams Morning Show, Monday through Friday, 5 to 10. KLAQ and KLAQ HD1, El Paso, a town square media station. Let's see if the uh, weather is going to cooperate. We do have chances of rain in the forecast. Did any part of town end up getting rain? Does anybody know? Yesterday, because it looked like it could happen. It looked like some parts <laughs> got rain and hail. I got purple rain. Sweet. I mean, I listened to it. Uh, mo- it's going to be very windy today. So high winds last night. I saw big branches knocked down and even some trees knocked over last night. Uh, mostly cloudy today. There is a 15% chance of rain. 87 is going to be the high temperature. Cool Canyon Nights uh, begins. You can get in starting at 6 o'clock, and then the music starts shortly after that. It is free. It's part of our uh, commitment to bring you free entertainment options. Free. And uh, performing on the main stage, Sonoro Scandalo is yeah. going to be our main act. Visit the Oscar Arietta Agency's booth. They have fun summer prizes and information on home and auto insurance. Don't forget, uh, Cool Canyon Nights is brought to you by Weststar, also LNF Distributing, White Claw Hard Seltzer. Come and check out Sonora Scandalo tonight on the main stage at Cool Canyon Nights. All right, back into news headlines, and we will try and uh, wrap things up with the news here in this segment. Good morning again. Good morning, Buzz. Good morning, Joanna. Good morning. Mount St. Helens could be recharging. Since February 1st, there have been over 350 small earthquakes with a magnitude less than two. Seismologists say it could indicate magma is moving into chambers beneath the volcano. Magma? Magma. Magma. <laughs> I can't hear that word without thinking of, of Dr. Magma. 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 <laughs> the last eruption was in 20, 2008, which added lava inside of the crater. Ma- Mount St. Helens' most destructive eruption? At 1980. 1980. 1980. I remember because that was the year we went on vacation to Atlanta, and it was on the TV the entire time we were in the motel room. Really? Yeah. Is is that the trip that you went to the wrestling match? Or they we went to the wrestling match, and they took us to a restaurant that reenacted Slave Days. I swear to God. Right. That was an eventful. That was. was. Yeah. That was very eventful. We took. My parents got this used green Chevy van that had green shag carpeting and a bed in it. And it was the most fun trip. Bang and bus? <laughs> I mean, it had it a bed. Had a CB in it. That's how 70s. Did you play like. with it? My dad brought several uh, eight tracks. <laughs> do, you know what a, do you know what an eight track is? It's like this old technology used for some type of audio recording. Yeah, I believe. Like a cassette, yeah. but not a cassette. Yeah, that's right. He brought he brought a few eight tracks, and we listened to uh, Willie Nelson's Stardust Memories over and over and over again. Nice. 
but that was a great God. If I could find a van like that, it it was so freaking much fun. And the CB was amazing because the truckers would start talking dirty, and my dad would have to turn the seat. <laughs> 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 All right, how about some music news? Yeah. Paisley Park is celebrating the 40th anniversary of the release of Prince's Purple Rain. Oh, that's oh, why that's you had Purple you Rain were, on the mind. Yeah. With a series of special events. The celebration kicks off today and will include an exclusive tour of Paisley Park for VIP ticket holders. The Revolution will perform on Friday, while Morris Day and the New Power Generation will perform at the State Theater on Saturday. There will also be a block party on Saturday next to a Prince mural in downtown Minneapolis. The Grammy winner died in 2016 of an accidental overdose at his Paisley Park estate. What did he overdose on? I think it, fentanyl was involved in there oh, somehow. Oh, God. It was one of those. And it was not, it was uh, maybe not the same year, but adjacent to the same year that, that Tom Petty died or something oh, very God. similar. Yeah, I had no idea. I guess you would have to say Prince is by far the most important artist to come out of uh, Minneapolis, St. Paul. I'm going yeah. to include the entire metro. Yeah, the whole city's having yeah. a celebration for him. Joanna, I just watched the New Girl episode where... Uh, he shows up and does a cameo on New <gasps> Girl. Oh, no, no. It's all... Of, the whole episode's about going to his house and the party. I love that episode. And and Prince helps Pr- Jess uh, tell Nick, Nick that he, she, she loves, loves him. him. Yeah. Prince was a really big fan of New Girl, so he's the one that was like, somebody needs to get me on this show. Really? I didn't know that story. Well... Back into some more music news, but this is more global music news. The system of a down frontman, my brother, Serge Tankian. <laughs> Tankian or Jimian, a Jimian. Tankian. Tankian has expressed utter hate and disdain for those bastards imagined dragons. What? <gasps> yeah. This sounds those like bastards. This sounds like the most embarrassing rock feud ever. Well, he says he has zero respect for those guys. After this would be like if Smash Mouth got into it with the Macarena guys. <laughs> <laughs> Maybe you wouldn't be so fast to judge when oh. you hear the reason why he oh, doesn't why? like them. He says he has zero respect for those guys after they proceeded with a controversial concert in Azerbaijan's capital of oh, Baku. I did hear about this. Tankian had previously reached out to the band urging them to cancel the show as it could be perceived as endorsing human rights violations against ethnic Armenians. Yeah. In a personal letter, he warned that performing would help whitewash the dictatorial regime's image and negatively impact their brand. Despite Tankian's plea, Imagine Dragons brushed off the concerns prompting Tankian to public, publicly condemn their disregard for this humanitarian catastrophe. I thought all the Armenians left. Left what? That area. like The Nagorno-Karbakh region that they were fighting over? Yeah, this, there was this... Yeah, early, there where was, they were murdered? Yes, there was a holocaust against Armenians. No, no, this was just this year. Oh, okay. Yeah, I thought this was all ancient history. No. Yeah, you know, um, my, my brother was a fencer. I thought the only reason that anybody hates Armenians these days is because of the Kardashians. No, bro. There, there are human rights of, uh, violations against... My, my brother uh, was a fencer. He was even on the world team for fencing, so he would travel around the world. Wow. And he, when he went to Turkey for a competition one time, he had to get extra security... And because he, he had a, an because, Armenian name? Because uh, your last name's on your, on your, on oh, your uniform. So... Uh, he had to get extra security, and he wasn't allowed to like be on certain in, in certain areas around Turkish people. Extra security. He already was surrounded by people with swords. <laughs> <laughs> so dumb. So dumb. In politics, the White House reportedly canceled a high-level meeting with Israeli officials on Iran that was scheduled for Thursday. Axios reports the move was in response to a video posted by Israeli Prime Minister Benjamin Netanyahu in which he claims the U.S. was withholding military aid. President Biden's top advisors were reportedly angered by the video and some Israeli officials were already en route to Washington, D.C. when the meeting was called off. Wait, what were they upset about? A video by uh, Benjamin Netanyahu that said the U.S. was withholding military aid. 
U.S. and Israeli officials were expected to discuss Iran's nuclear program and the ongoing war in Gaza. Reports say that Iran has obtained computer modeling that could potentially be used for research and development of nuclear weapons. And Universal Music is partnering up with the startup company Sound Labs to create artificial intelligent models of artists' vocals. Buzz? You would start to think if you're one of the artists, wait a second, are they trying to replace me with myself? Well, they've signed a deal allowing singers under the label to train AI models using their own voices. The deal would make sure artists have ownership of the results. Yeah, but can't anybody do the same thing using vocal models? From nope. And artists? are given full artistic approval on how the vocals are used. The vocal models would be exclusively available for artists and not the general public. Sound Lab said their designs aren't meant to replace human artists, but to amplify human creativity. Sounds like Buzz could be out of a job. I, if you, you can spin it any way you want to. What it sounds like to me is it's another way that artists can cheat and make fake music. You know, maybe if you're one of these lead singers, and I'm not going to mention Vince Neil by name. <laughs> I mean, I'm not going to mention anybody by name. <laughs> that just can't quite sing the way you did, like you used to. Mm -hmm. This might help them continue to make music. I, I guess I won't believe anybody's actual actually performing unless I see it with my own eyes in person, and it's an acoustic set. You know what I mean? Yeah. This is like all f complete 100% auto tune. I don't know how they're going to use them because it said well, that the artists they are going to some be examples. A person could sing in a foreign language without having to learn the foreign language. You could just oh, program yeah. it so that you could do, you know, the Beatles sometimes put songs out in German and French, but they would go uh -huh. in and record them in, in German the, and really. Yes. Uh if you're if your voice just can't quite cut it anymore, you know, but if I were going to pay a lot of money to go see somebody who, who can't, am I really getting my money's worth for that? It depends on how much I like him. Yeah, that's a good point. I went to go see Gordon Lightfoot the last time he performed <laughs> in El Paso, and he really, his voice was unsteady. Let's put it that way. So you're saying maybe that would have helped in that situation? N no, but it was worth it. I just wanted to see Gordon Lightfoot, Lightfoot perform live. Uh, it says uh, these artists can go on making music long after they're deceased. dead. Oh, my God. But then they don't have control. Well, I guess their estate would have control over it. I mean, the worst case scenario is if a company gets to use your voice and, and then, then says, uh, we're, we're dropping you from our label. label. We have we, fake you. We don't need you anymore. All right. Just a couple stories left. For anybody out there. Are you a wine drinker? Well, you may be grossed out by this wine discovery. The oldest wine ever discovered has a very gross ingredient in it. An uh -oh. ancient Sauvignon Blanc was discovered by accident in 2019 when a family found a 2,000-year-old sunken Roman tomb when renovating their home in Carmona, Spain. Wait, wait, wait. They had Sauvignon, Sauvignon Blanc? That's just, just the name of the grape. That's just the name of the grape. Oh, okay. So if they have those grapes, yeah. Organic chemist Jose Rafael Ruiz Arrebola got the task of analyzing the liquid and found it contained body parts or human remains, if anything. Wait, wait, wait. It, was the bottle completely intact, like closed or? Uh, I guess so. So it was a bottle. It was a bottle. Why would it have human body parts in it? Because it was originally an urn. <gasps> It was pretty common for Romans to be buried with comforts they enjoyed while they were alive, including booze. And it was common to reuse some of these things so they sometimes. Put the, they put the human remains in the bottle, right? I, the bottle contained the human remains. It, it contains some human remains. I'm not sure if it contained all of his remains or if it contained okay. another person's remains but before. But it had been used as an urn. It had been. So the person had been cremated? Like I said, I don't know if it was his remains. Uh -huh. it, he could have been buried and not been cremated, and it could have been the remains of somebody else that was left in the urn, and then they reused it for wine storage. Just gross overall. Okay. Sick. I, I think wine's pretty gross. I don't, don't care. For Do you like wine, Joanna? 
Uh, only red. I can't do white. You're a girly girl. Thank you. Does it give you headaches? The white does give me headaches, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, wine gives me headaches. The white does. The white. <laughs> oh, that white <laughs> really gets me amped up, you know. Uh, flip phones or dumb phones are making a comeback. And the reason is people just don't want any distractions. Gen Z is driving the trend. Yeah. And my daughter told me I need to get a flip phone. Did she? Yeah. She says I need to break my addiction. She said you're addicted <laughs> to your phone? To, to royal phones. Oh, yeah, yeah. Because <laughs> you keep playing that game? Yeah. <laughs> well, apparently it's because people <laughs> just want to be present and not addicted to the noise that comes with smartphones. Uh. Tech entrepreneur Will Brawley is a perfect example. He ditched his iPhone four years ago for a flip. He said, I wasn't present with other people. I was constantly checking emails, texts, sitting at a stoplight, looking at my phone, and constantly being distracted. There are plenty of low-cost options. Buzz, let us know if you find any. To, and you give a dumb phone a shot. No, I'm not going to do that. I am, like, uh, just about to break through this one level, so. <laughs> <laughs> it's not just this one It's level. not even a cool game. It's like one of those, like... It's like Candy Crush. It's candy like Crush. Candy Crush. <laughs> And finally, baseball just got a lot more fun. Oregon's only baseball team is adding an interesting offering to its concessions. The Summer League Portland Pickles are now the first sports team in the U.S. to sell cannabis-based refreshments at games. Canna cannabis? Cannabis. Cannabis-based refreshments. <laughs> The like that will get you hot, get you high and stuff. Yes, the cycling frog THC seltzer will be available in passion fruit and lemon flavors. They'll be available for fans twenty one and over. Wait, it'll get you drunk and high at the same time? No. Well, you call no. it a seltzer. It's a seltzer. I only hear people refer to seltzer as a hard seltzer. The word seltzer just means carbonated. Yeah, I know. <laughs> but I only drink the hard ones. The pickles say the Portland Parks and Recreations Department gave them the thumbs up. Okay. And with the news, Sandika. Let me do a quick Mo Show calendar. I can do this really quickly. Today is the hey. first day of summer. Uh, today is International Tennis Day as well. Uh, today is National Vanilla Milkshake Day. Yum. And we are exactly two weeks away from 4th of July. Birthdays include actor Christopher Mintz Plaz, who was McLovin, McLovin in Superbad. He is 35 today. Uh, Allison Porter, who played the little girl in Curly Sue. Aren't we supposed to interview <gasps> Allison yes, Porter? next week. Next week we're going to be talking. So the little girl from Curly Sue was also on American Idol, and she's got an album out. So Make Allison it, Porter. She came out in an episode of The Golden Girls. <gasps> Which one? She plays Blanche's granddaughter. Yeah, but she's 43 I remember now. that one. Oh, that's we're interesting. We're going to interview her. Oh, can we, we, I, we're going to ask her about Ruth McClanahan and what it was like with yeah. talking to her. Right? Could you pick up on the, uh, like the subtle hatred that was a lingering undercurrent on the set of The Golden Girls? Haven't you ever heard that? Like somebody <gasps> yes, that, really, like, B. Arthur B. did Arthur. not like oh, Betty White yeah. at all. Uh, Michael Anthony, bassist and backing vocalist for Van Halen, is 70 today. And uh, Nicole Kidman is 57. She's the lady who tells you how great movies are as you're waiting for your movie to start. <laughs> <laughs> John Goodman is 72. You know him as Dan Connor from Roseanne. Also Walter from Big Lebowski. Sully! Sully from the cartoon, whatever that's called. Monsters, Monsters in the Inc. Closet. Hmm? Monsters in the Closet. Lionel that's a different show. Lionel Richie <laughs> is 75. Man, I'm telling you, there was a period of about six years where if you turned on the radio in the 80s, there was a 50-50 chance it was going to be a Lionel Richie. And if it wasn't a Lionel Richie song, it was Phil Collins. <laughs> <laughs> but Lionel Richie is 75. A birthday for Bob Vila from this old house. He's 78 today. I, hmm? I, I remember growing up, like, Bob Vila, for some reason, was always on during the day or it, just at weird hours. It was he, he always had a show that I knew it was time to go to bed or do something when Bob Vila came on. Um, Brian Wilson of the Beach Boys. 
considered by many to be uh, a mad genius, is 82 today. And uh, this it's the 101 year anniversary of Mexican revolutionary Pancho Villa being assassinated. On this date in 1923, Me- are you about to applaud for the assassination of Pancho Villa? Well, he attacked the United States. Yeah, he was a bad guy. Uh, for a bad guy, a lot of people have stories about my great-grandmother knew Pancho Villa or he lived in this apartment above where my parents, you know, my great-grandparents lived or whatever. He what? kicked my great-great-grandparents out of uh, Chihuahua. Uh, well, anyway, he was 45 years old when he was assassinated. And today is summer solstice, also known as the first day of summer, the uh, longest day of the year. And, uh, you know, this is when all kinds of summer activity starts. We save all of our outdoor activity for the hottest months of the year. Yeah, right. You ever think about that? Hiking and camping are excellent summer activities. If you want to die. When camping, don't forget marshmallows. They can be used in a pinch for flaming arrows. Bring your insect repellent, bear repellent, escape convict repellent, and cryptid repellent. If you forget any one of these, you could die. And above all, never go to a national park. Because no one has ever returned. Wrong! It's a Wendigo! <laughs> Follow these safety tips to keep you safe all summer. Which will only kill you if you let it. I'm Daniel Paulus, and whether you're wrapping up your work day... Ages 21 and over. See Speaking Rock's Facebook page for more info. Listen, what else you got to do in the morning? Wake up, El Paso. Good morning, morning show. Buzz Adams is back. 95.5. KLAQ. Has our entertainment news, the Hollywood cheese may on the way in just a moment. I told you I <laughs> found a couple of stories in today's paper. Why do you highlight it as well as cut them out? It, it, doesn't the cutting just work as well? <laughs> so he doesn't forget. <laughs> I, I, I highlight the main points, like they make bullet points out of it. Uh, U.S. troops are going to train in Juarez in Mexico military exercises. Um, Interesting. Military troops will take part in separate training exercises alongside the Mexican military this summer. It says here it's a part of strengthening cooperation between Mexico and the United States. 220 U.S. military personnel are scheduled to be in Juarez uh, during as part of the exercise called the Fuerzas Amigas. Fuerzas Amigas. Joanna translation. Friendly forces. Uh Uh-huh. Similar exercises have taken place along the border for years. I didn't know that. Hey, so whenever (laughs) whenever there are, like, immigrants coming up from South America and Honduras and places like that, does does Mexico... Try and stop them? Yeah, do they not, like, hey, we have a border, too, you know? Yeah, that's a good question. (laughs) Is it free travel? Is it just like, yeah, yeah. Come on down. Cause I, I, because they know that they're going up to the United States. Yeah, do they do anything to impede or hamper them at all along the way? They're like, good luck. It says here, the presence of U.S. military troops on Mexican soil is a long-time sensitive issue in Mexico, dating back to the loss of of half of Mexico's territory in the Mexican-American War of 1846, known in Mexico as La Invasión Norteamericana. Well, that's ancient history, (laughs) right? Somebody was upset that you said... uh, 
I don't, did you say you did? I applauded the, the death of, of Pancho Villa, Villa on yeah. this date 101 years ago? Yes. What'd the person say? Do you want to hear it? Uh, was Maybe. It I didn't know it was an neckline call. Yeah, let me hear it. Morning show. I was just listening, and you guys were talking about Pancho Villa. Nico, brother, come on, get educated. Pancho Villa was a good guy, not a bad guy. He was like the Mexican Robin Hood. He helped out all the poor, and he he fought against the Galachos taking over Texas, you know, where it used to be Mexico. So he's a good guy, not uh, Nico. Okay, get it right now. Thank you. Okay. Wait, wait, Everybody's wait, wait. good guy. Texas had already been a state in the United States, right? He had seven years States. before Pancho Villa was active, right? And look, so to some to some people he's a hero. To a lot of other people, he's a villain. And specific, my family used to like comes from Chihuahua, so they were the Spaniard, Spanish of Spanish lineage. And at the time, Pancho Villa was kicking out as many Spaniards. As he could, because y'all were the colonizers. No, I mean, you don't. You don't think that was part of it? Is by it like, by nineteen twelve, I don't think there was uh, people who directly colonized Mexico that were Spanish <laughs> in nineteen twelve. Right, there, fine. Let's say you were the the descendants of colonizers. The sure, descendants of colonizers. <laughs> All right. Uh, El Paso is welcoming some new businesses. They run these articles about once a week. This one's kind of interesting, though. El Paso's getting its first quick trip. Do you know what quick trip the is? The QT? Yeah. Well, uh, Horizon already has one. Do they? Yeah. This was what most of the convenience... And it is essentially a convenience store. It's a convenience it's store. A convenience it's store. a really nice one, though. Like, they have an entire wall dedicated to slushies. A whole slushy wall. Hell a whole slushy wall. Yeah. With Floor what? to ceiling? No, no. Uh, it's Do they have to long. get you out a ladder like you're at Gringotts? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Hey, check these calls in because I'm I'm just kind of free form in this break here, and I've noticed some, another call came in about Pancho. No, no, this one's actually about your question about whether Mexico protects their border. From, yeah, because I mean, it seems like when you see all those people coming up all the way through Mexico, it seems like Mexico's policy is kind of like, oh well, not our problem, right? Do you want to hear it? Yeah. I think. Good morning, Buzz. Um, I think Mexico, from what I understand, is that Mexico does, they do kind of protect their border as well. And from what I've uh, heard and, and uh, from what I understand is that they treat, they treat their, the immigrants way worse. I mean, like really, really bad. I would imagine. You know, they, I, and I don't get it. They, they complain about, you know, the United States Border Patrol, man, we treat them like, we treat them with, you know, humanely, you know, we, we don't treat them bad at all. But, but what I've heard is that Mexico, Mexican Border Patrol, they treat immigrants really, really bad. I mean, they beat them and they leave them without food and all that kind of stuff. But who knows? I mean, that, that's what I understand. God, so add that to the list of things those people go through, right? I guess you know, so. I mean, yeah. if they're gonna, they probably they probably rob them too. Hmm. Uh, so, Quick Trip is uh, based out of Tulsa, Oklahoma. When I was growing up in Oklahoma, the two major competing well, three I'd say three Quick Trip, Get and Go, Get and Go, Get and Go, Get and Go, and we had Circle K back in those days. The Japanese-themed store Daiso Ooh. continues to draw excited customers with its variety of merchandise. This is kind of like Oh, a, there's one in El Paso. This yeah, is, one just opened up on the east side. Yeah, the Las Palmas Marketplace. Mm -hmm. What do they sell? Which you can read all about over at KLQ.com, and it will answer your question it's, of what they sell. It's like the superstore of Asian Products. I know it says Japanese, but you'll find all kinds of different Asian <laughs> snacks. They should call it the Weeaboo stores. <laughs> I mean, it, it, it's, it's the like Jap a Japanese it's products. Five yeah. below. They've it's got a, their produce section has fruit that you. I swear to God, you've never seen. Some you of been to it already? Yeah, I've been to one in Tulsa. 
What I've noticed is Tulsa is about five. <laughs> for, for some of this stuff that, that El Paso gets, Tulsa has it maybe two or three years before. Really? Mm-hmm. Uh, the Daiso store that recently opened in Las Palmas Marketplace. What is Las Palmas Marketplace? It's Over a marketplace. Oh, remember when we uh, were coming back from Mora Mia and we were like, hey, look, there's a, a Burlington or a Ross. <laughs> yeah. It's that. Wait, it's a Burlington? Oh, that, it's in the same it's in shopping same area. same shopping center, yeah. Uh, so, yeah, I, my daughter wanted to go in and check it out. She was going through kind of like her stage where uh, she loved everything Japanese. Mm-hmm. They They had a lot of different stuff. El Paso's newest escape room, Escapology, uh, just opened last month, and that Ooh. is uh, across from Top Golf. Yeah, so I actually saw them building this place when uh, I did a remote at Mutt's Cantina, the uh, the dog place. It's right next to that. Are people supporting Mutt's? I am. Well, you went to the grand opening. Have you been back since? No. And you live like two <laughs> minutes away from it, so. Did Here's you take a, Jack that Like 30 day? seconds. I did take Jack that day. And it was awesome. Well, the, the little dog, here's the, here's the only problem I could possibly see. The little outside area where the dogs are, there's no shade whatsoever, is there? Uh, it so, looks like it is completely exposed to the They're still in the process. So, sun. When I was talking to the owner, she said she, like, is in the midst of uh, negotiating with her pergola guy. For <laughs> They need a pergola. Listen, yeah. if, if anybody's ever needed a pergola, that that's, place that's a plan. a pergola. Yeah, that is the plan. Wait, when did you go? I just see it on off the side of the road. Oh, okay. You know, you can see it. It's like, God, that looks awfully hot. Yeah, I, I think it did get pretty, pretty hot. Has anybody ever been to that indoor skydiving place? Because it's been there for years, and I've never seen a car outside it. It, I, n- Not that I know of. I have not, no. But I think for my next birthday, I want to go there. Because uh, same time I was at Mutt's Cantina, I passed by it. And it actually did look really cool. Uh, for like a one-time thing. I wouldn't go there probably more than once in my life. There's one thing that fun. there was one thing that keeps me from going. The humi- Your tiny bladder. The, the pot. No, the possibly <laughs> possible humiliation uh-huh. that I get there and they go, "Oh, you weigh too much." Hey, look, a honest. fat guy. <laughs> <laughs> we like, don't have enough wind. Yeah. <laughs> They're like, he's just not loading. <laughs> <laughs> that is so, dude. That remind that would remind me. Remember a few years ago, I was I was carrying like an extra fifty pounds or so. Yeah, uh, yeah. When you'd go to Six Flags, and they'd try and latch you into the thing, if you didn't fit, they would make you get up and walk the line of shame oh. that you didn't fit in the in the roller coaster. Well, that was a real wake up call, and I lost a little bit of weight. But is I that when I, you got your stomach stapled? I did right not get my stomach stapled. That's the rumor I started. <laughs> yeah, that's the rumor we both <laughs> have yeah. perpetuated. Well, those are hurtful. I'm sorry. <laughs> Just like how uh, being bald is the only thing you can say about me. Uh, you also can't grow a beard. It's funny. It's all that, part of the same. It's burn. funny that your hair is falling out on top and you've never been able to grow any on your face. I think that at makes the sense. Same time. Anyways. It's like you're an elderly baby. You're fat. <laughs> <laughs> Not as fat as I used Boys. to be. I could ride the big taxi and now <laughs> you, six can't, you couldn't be lifted into the air. <laughs> Uh, we take a break. You think we'll be able to get to our entertainment news in the next segment, Joanna? Let's take a break. All right, let's do that. Summer. Everyone seems to think it's great. I do. I do also. But what about the dark side of summer? There is a dark side, side of summer? Did you know that summer is when insects grow wings and fly? <laughs> that sounds awful. You might even swallow one. <laughs> That's not all. Summer makes you wet and sticky. <laughs> do you want to be wet and sticky? Like Giuliani. No! Summer sun turns mayo into poison. Oh, God. Turns ants into roommates. Bastards. And cute little dogs into slobber factories. Ugh. Get away from me with that wet ball. So the next time you're wishing for summer, remember what you're really asking for. This message paid for by Autumn. Autumn. We have Halloween. Music news, concert updates, song and album factoids, and of course, nothing but El Paso's best rock. Oh, if you're like me and you have a, or you want to put the power of radio to work for your brand, log on to radioupdate.com. 
Live from the KLAQ studios, the Buzz Adams Morning Show. Courtesy of Blasheen, Vias, and Interman Personal Injury Lawyers. At GVILaw.com. Joanna has notified me that we will not have time to get to the Hollywood Cheese Bank today. Damn you. Well, <laughs> it's all right. We have we have a lot of things to cover. I think you have some phone calls I that do. you wanted to play. I got a few that I thought I would play. Uh, go ahead. Look at you both sharing the duties of sharing <clears throat> neckline calls. You said duty. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> there are a couple people that are upset with uh, us for saying that, or you really, for saying that the uh, the Mexican side uh, doesn't treat immigrants well. I didn't say that. A caller said that. I don't know what goes on in Mexico. We were asking, D- does this happen? Uh, like, we don't know. Do they do anything to impede the migrants? And then somebody called in and said, yeah, they treat them way worse. So there was somebody who was disputing that? Yes. Just want to be clear. I didn't make that claim. Good morning, guys. This is Flor, long-time listener, first-time caller. Um, I just needed to comment on that issue with the borders in Mexico. Um, Actually, it is a president's call. The president, uh, Obrador, actually let everyone in. Nobody was stopping them because of his orders. So I guess she's saying that President Obrador was was letting just any migrants come in. Nobody treats them bad. Nobody gives them hell or anything like that. The problem is that once they, they cross the border, obviously they present with uh, all the problems that immigrants do have. One of them, of course, uh, is the narcos cartel. If they get their hands on them, of course, they will try to push them with them so they can do their bidding. Not that Mexicans or the government treat them bad. It's uh, two different separate issues. Once they, the immigrants wants to cross the borders into Mexico, they will not face any um, troubles crossing over because of government ruling. That's okay. it. So what she's saying is, if they run afoul of anybody, it's likely to be one of these one of these cartels. cartels and right. They may tell them, "Hey, you're going to do this for us when you get to Mexico, or you're going to." Yeah, I, you know that's one thing to think about. You think about people crossing the border. Who knows what they they've been forced into doing already before they even reach the the U.S. border. Hey, that's not true. That's not true. Mexico uh, doesn't treat uh, the people coming from South America bad. Only the ones from Guatemala. <laughs> <laughs> Only the ones, the ones from, from Guatemala. Guatemala. Good morning, Buzz Adams. This is Donald J. Trump calling the neckline. Let me start off with what a horrible city Milwaukee is. Just awful. Secondly, I just wanted to mention that I aced my cognitive test. I barely even prepared for it. And I got the best score possible. That's right. Also, did I mention what an amazing city Milwaukee is? Just great. It's been a while since I've called in. Unfortunately, the courthouse doesn't allow phones. I've also been very busy trying to bring back The Apprentice, and I want you, Buzz Adams, Nico, and Joanna to be my first contestants, although I'm sure Nico would be the first to get fired for being late. (laughs) (laughs) All right, that was a good one. Good one, five points, guy. Yeah, but the the voice is a little off. He's too fast. Too fast. It's got to be slower. A little bit more deliberate. Little pauses in between it, words. Right. But uh, I appreciate We have yeah, so many calls today about the freaking Ten Commandments, man. Yeah, seriously. And S- so many. One person was even like, you're talking about this too much. Uh, I, I agree with that person. Here's somebody who thinks that you guys are need to be nicer to me <laughs> over a specific issue. Oh. Hey, guys. This is Joe. Um. This call is just pretty much for Nico. Nico, how dare you talk bad about Buzz's game? Dude, that is a really fun game, and you have no idea how entertaining it is. <laughs> and I speak from experience from a guy that's on level 48, 42. So, 4,842. Yeah. Uh, what level are you, Buzz? All right, guys. Have a good day. Bye-bye. Okay, why don't you give the name of your game again? 
royal match. <laughs> it's like and a, what level are you on? Uh, just barely like in the one twenties. This dude's on level like four thousand. Some of those levels you got to work at for days. By the yeah. way, I've never played mobile gaming, and I can now say after playing that these are going to be the re- the end of America as we know it. <laughs> if you get addicted to playing one of these games, it's all you want to do. To the point where you're like, well, I'm going in the bathroom. I might as well try to clear this level while I'm in there. <laughs> It took me all of 48 hours before I said, well, I'm out of lives and I have to wait 24 minutes before Is it I the kind of again. game where you have to flip things around and match them and then it, they like disappear I, and then... And listen, then I had heard the warnings that these are... I always thought it was ridiculous. How can you get addicted? So addicted to a game that you're buying... You're using real money for a fake farm. Right. For instance. <laughs> It within forty eight hours, I'm like, yeah, I'd pay five ninety nine to get an extra life. <clears throat> oh my god! Uh, they're insidious. I should never have done this. <laughs> I was, this was a I big mistake. Been, I would have been better off trying crack cocaine for the first time. <laughs> <laughs> I got a monkey on my back, folks. <laughs> Buzz is in rehab next week. Like he's all gone. <laughs> right. <laughs> <laughs> oh man, I got that royal match d- disease. Oh man, <laughs> I'm thinking about it right now, and I'll look at things where it's like they're almost four in a row, and I'm like Im- imagining that, how I would. Get- that is the game you were playing the other day that I posted on our Instagram. Don't- this is what Buzz does after the show. I can't believe you guys make and then m- the- videos of me, and I don't even know. It about was just it. that one, and then the next day it was Nico. What was I doing? What was Nico doing? You guys were recording your after buzz, and Nico was just in there, in his without shoes on. Oh yeah, walks yeah. around barefooted. Yeah, sometimes I do. <laughs> in this studio. That's a good point. Uh, we're gonna start wrapping things up here, but I do want to send out a couple of reminders. Did you have a call about uh, somebody wanted to know about the donations for uh, Redoso? Yes. Did you have that one ready to go? I do. Actually, it was shared with us by uh, our boss, Kevin. Mm -hmm. Let's do that one last, and i got to start wrapping up. Good morning. I was just calling about the donations to Wyatt Underwood for the firefighters in Rio Doso. I was wondering if they would be able to share a cash app, maybe where we could cash up them a donation if we're not able to make it over there this morning by nine. Thank you. Yeah, so they they were uh, taking donations of food and blankets and pillows and coffee and uh, some of it for the for the people who lost their homes, but also some of it for the for the firefighters. I, no, I don't know about a cash app, but there is a fund through the Community Foundation of Lincoln County. Uh, donations are tax deductible. The CF. OLC is a 501c3 nonprofit organization. And if you want to donate, this will go to help uh, those people up around Redoso who are without shelter. Maybe their house has been burned down or they can't get back to it until some of the damage. I mean, the fire's still going on, right? Mm-hmm. Yeah. Like the damage is still being done. To donate to the shelter fund through PayPal, you can go to the following. C-F-O-L-C dot org. That's C-F-O-L-C dot org. Uh, I guess that means we're out of time probably, right? Yes. <laughs> I had already turned off my mic. You were just wrapping it up. I'm you, wrapping it up. You brought here. up, somebody mentioned After Buzz. We got an After Buzz. We does. Today, so uh, subscribe to the After Buzz. It's just bonus content. And the daily uh, buzz on demand. Somebody wanted to know about yesterday. Since uh, since I wasn't here, the show was a best of show. And we don't do uh, the buzz on demand for best of shows. Correct. So uh, we will have uh, buzz on demand. Uh, subscribe to that podcast as well as the After Buzz. And you get those wherever you get your podcast. All right, have a great Thursday, everybody. Cool Canyon Nights tonight. Woo! Big concert at McKelligan Canyon Amphitheater. The best part, it is free. So we will see you at Cool Canyon Nights tonight. That's the show for today. The Buzz Adams Morning Show will be back tomorrow at 6 a.m. I'll see you tomorrow, okay? Okay, bye-bye. In the meantime,